Father, please don't leave. It's dark. The witch could be hiding in here. Don't do this. I'm sorry if I have sinned. I didn't mean to. Please. My old nightstand. Mother said they threw it away. There's a matchbox inside the drawer. I can now try to light up the room. Hey! Where are you? Mother! I'm in the basement! For God's sake, don't get seen in that place. Get out immediately! I'm still waiting to hear the prayer, son. What are you waiting for? You go in there? Why would you do that, Yoda? It's his behavior that did that to him. He was good all day. He helped me with the wheat and the food and... And he talked to a kid at the funeral. When did this happen? Uh, I, I, I didn't see him. Of course you didn't. Because you don't care of this family. I do. I should lock you all downstairs. You all need to learn. Where is she? Where is our daughter? Mother has dozens of the same in her room. Each has an engraving with a big scary eye inside a triangle. <laughs> help! Mother! Help me! You silly. What are you doing? It's me. I I'm sorry. I, I thought you were that witch. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you? Witches don't exist. And it's just the two of us here. You're wrong. Father would never lie to us. About what now? About the witch that cursed our bloodline. He's just trying to scare us with stories so we don't do anything wrong. And today you did wrong, so he punished you by locking you down here in the dark. What did I do? I, I still don't understand. You talked to that tall boy. Don't you remember? We are not allowed to talk to other people anymore. They are evil. I thought that meant we must avoid adults. How am I supposed to make friends then? Mother said we have each other and God. She's right. I don't think we need anyone else. Why are you here? I heard father talking to himself before going to get you in your room. So I ran here and hid. But why? You know he's going to be very angry at you once he finds out. Because I've promised I wouldn't let you be alone in the dark again. And when I promise something... You never break a promise, I know. I'm glad you were here. I can't forget our aunt's white face. Me neither. She looked so different. Her head was so bloated and pallid. And her eyes and hair, so dark. The curse did that to her. Don't be ridiculous. She's at peace now. That's all that matters. I hope she is. Your aunt was once such a beautiful woman. Full of life. The perfect creation of God. But her fate was nothing more than a Sunday morning rite. And the witch's curse just a fairy tale story. Evil is everywhere, my dear children. It is hiding in the shadows of this world. It takes form of animals, and it possesses people. Father, please forgive! You should look up to your sister. Unlike you, she values God and this family. 
It's my fault he went to talk to that boy. I ignored him because I was looking into the coffin and I lost sense of time. Ah, I beg you, don't hurt him anymore. You must learn to be alone with God. You must learn. You all must learn what true faith is. Oh, uh, it was just a dream. I often think about that peculiar day, but I've never relived it so vividly in my dreams. Why now? Why in this place? I... I need my glasses. I can't even think without them. Ah, here they are. Fallen to the floor, but still intact. Thinking of the dream I had, I don't remember going to sleep at all. We came in, and then... We came in, Victoria and Nikolai went upstairs to prepare for the castle, and then... Nothing. I must have fainted. I have to talk to Victoria at once. Is this meant to represent a basin? Like at the entrance of a church? This is blasphemy. That's not holy water for sure. It has a weird smell. It looks disgusting. I'm staying away from it. Nikolai? Yes, Benedict? Where's Victoria? I don't know. Do you have the slightest idea why Victoria rented this dreary house? I don't even know how she found it. Looks like the owner is some kind of artist. Or is at least convinced to be. Very morbid taste. <laughs> Strange figures. I agree. I've never seen so many masks in my life. Especially not placed on walls. That's a strange painting. It is. Take a better look at it, and tell me what you see. Why? Please, do as I say. I'll get to the point. Mean eyes at the edge of a wicked soul. That is not a mere shadow. It's a symbol of darkness, of evilness devouring this lost man. A snake-like mouth implies a man who cannot be trusted, at the very least. I've taken a closer look at the painting. You don't recognize this man? I've never seen him before. And nothing happened to you by looking at him? Why would anything happen to me? Last night, after your sister and I came upstairs, she was getting ready for the castle, and I was standing right here, and... I wonder, yesterday when we boarded the train, was anyone else in our cabin? Just the three of us. But once the train left Budapest, wasn't there a man who came in? By placing the sign, do not disturb on our doorknob, I made sure this wouldn't happen. The only time that door opened was when the conductor peered in to tell us we have arrived at our destination. You haven't answered. Why would anything happen to me? What's wrong with this painting? I don't know yet. Please, just follow me as I go over yesterday's events. I'll get to the point. And when we left the train station, no one was following us? Didn't Victoria notice him? Notice whom? Your dear wife was over the moon to have finally arrived at Sveti Kotar. She couldn't stop talking about the place, but said nothing about anyone following us. Right. And on our way to the house, we stopped at the square. There was a strange ritual taking place, with a gigantic effigy. What was it like? And what about the mass of hooded people that gathered there? It was a dreadful scene. I remember the goosebumps when hearing the crowd pray as one voice, though. Let me tell you what happened after that. We found the path which led us to this house. What happened when Victoria knocked? Well, we realized the door was actually ajar. And the owner wasn't here. Just silence. 
dead awful silence. Uh, it gave me chills. Once we entered the house, what did you and your wife do? I said it before. We went upstairs to prepare for the castle exhibition. Leaving me to wander alone downstairs in complete darkness. You found nothing odd about the house being empty and unlocked? I did, but Victoria said it's nothing to worry about. So I just followed her. We never went to the castle? You don't remember? The last thing I remember is searching for a light. And then nothing. What do you mean? I mean, everything after was only a dream. But I don't even remember going to sleep. Victoria dragged me into this town to make me attend that piddling exhibition in the castle. We never went there, did we? Which means I left the monastery only to spend a horrible night in this house. We both fell into an inexplicable void. <sighs> Something is terribly wrong here. Tell me what happened last night. What's wrong with this painting? And where's Victoria? I'm afraid I don't have the answers. What happened is that while I was waiting for her to get ready, my attention was drawn by this painting. Next moment, I was seeing myself relive yesterday's events with one difference. The man in the painting was there the whole time. The whole time? He was in our cabin, and he was that gigantic effigy the inhabitants set on fire. Shortly afterwards, he emerged from the crowd in human form again unchanged and then led us towards the house once we got here he jumped on my back and asked me to carry him upstairs i was happy i felt like a father carrying his own child carrying this being on your back must have some weird symbolic meaning he was holding so tightly that i could feel his long and sharp fingernails penetrate my throat after we finally got upstairs, I was so upset and in pain that I had to throw him off. I quickly turned around to reprimand him and instead saw a human-sized crow with no eyes and a blood-stained beak. It croaked at me and then soared inside the painting. I wanted to run off, but couldn't. I was in shock, too terrified. That was the moment I woke on the bed, fully dressed and disoriented. Victoria wasn't here. Why did you ask me all those strange questions about yesterday? I had to separate the dream from the real, as the dream was startlingly real. Startlingly real, just like my own dream. We should leave this accursed house at once. After I woke, I noticed Victoria didn't even sleep on this bed. So I went downstairs to check if she was there, perhaps. I found only you, still asleep on the couch, and the door locked. That's when I started to think. We have to force our way out of here because we don't have the key. We are guests in this house. And needless to say, men of God, we must leave without doing any damage. I've already searched this floor for a key, and tried to open the balcony door, but it's locked or stuck in some way. What about the windows? Strangely enough, or maybe for a good reason, they're made in a way that prevents them from being opened. Stay here and give it a second look. Whatever you can find that could help us. I'm going downstairs to check. Force should be our last resort to leave. Or maybe we get lucky and Victoria comes back in the meantime. Let's hurry up then. Just don't look at the man in the painting again. We don't want to risk anything. I need light. I'm pretty sure it's not locked, but rather just stuck. Not sure what's the cause because both sides of the door are heavily grimed from the outside.
looks like mud. And it has a sickly odor. How did it end up on a balcony? If I could push it back with a stick or something similar, I might be able to open the door. All I see here is a lonely coat rack. Forgive me, God, but I must take this. I think it'll fit perfectly under the balcony door. I was right. It fits perfectly underneath. Looks like there's mud on the outside. That should be enough to open the door. My God. Nikolai, come upstairs quickly. You must see this. Just a moment. I have to finish here first. It doesn't look inviting, but I think I see something in there. I should go check on Benedict upstairs now. Come closer. Take a look at this. Oh, God. All crows look exactly the same to me, but this one seems to be missing its eyes. Indeed. Just like the one in your dream. What is this? It looks like a mixture of earth, blood, and flesh. Have you noticed these marks on the door? They were unnoticeable with the door closed. I don't think these are just random marks. It's a symbol, and it looks like it was made by sharp fingernails. You understand now why I wanted to leave the moment I saw this house? Calm down, Benedict. I am calm, but we both don't remember what happened here, and we both had horrible dreams. And now this. Can you still smell that sickly odor? Don't you see the connection with your dream? Maybe I opened the door last night and saw the crow's head. It could be the reason why I had that dream. Doubtful. Something else is at work here. The crow looks like it's been recently decapitated, and the mud is still wet. Don't you wonder who did this? And why? I can't think clearly in here. I found a key inside the stoop. The key to the entrance door? Inside the stoop? I believe so. Haven't tried it yet. At least I won't have to walk over the devilry on the balcony, and risk an injury by jumping below. You think Victoria could be responsible? If it wasn't you, or even me, who else could have done it? The man from the painting? I knew it. Come on. You really think she's capable of such a thing? What's the matter with you? She may be my sister, but I don't know her anymore. I do know she's playing with things she doesn't understand. Things she doesn't understand? Things no one should understand. The symbol, the decapitated head, blood and flesh. You mean with occultism? Witchcraft, I believe. She's playing the role of a witch to play with me, unaware of the consequences that will inevitably come. My wife is not a saint, but to think she's practicing demonic things is insane. You think she made us forget last night and influenced our dreams? No, but she's the one who picked this house. Not you, and certainly not me. That was a deliberate choice with a plan. And what would that plan be? I think the castle exhibition was just a lure. Her real intention was to drag me into this town to play with my beliefs and fears. You really don't know her anymore. What happened between the two of you? She doesn't want to tell me. She became the same person our aunt was. Godless and incredulous about our father's words. Hopefully he's at a place where he found peace. Unaware of my sister's thoughts and acts.
The key I found downstairs is probably the key of the main door. You already revealed your suspicion about the key. Why are you mentioning it again? If the key is here, where is Victoria? I don't know and I don't care. She could have locked the door from the inside, left the key, and then jumped from the balcony. That's my point. It doesn't make any sense. Why would she do that? I think she found a second key. Because no footprints are visible in the mud outside. She didn't jump from the balcony. Something else must have happened. Let's go outside and make a plan to find Victoria. Our minds are being suffocated in here. No, I've had enough of talking, and I don't intend to search for her. I'm leaving this town at once. You can't just leave. She's your sister, for God's sake. She stopped being that a long time ago. Just look around and think about everything we discussed today. I'll say it again. Something else must have happened. There must be a logical explanation to all of this. Why did you even agree to come here? Obviously, I wanted to see and feel what it looks like in hell. I'm not in the mood for joking. Why? She mentioned she had to talk to your superior in the monastery. And what else could she do? After I declined, the only way to have it her way was to persuade Father Imre. He must have given her his blessings only because of the assignment he had for me. Talk to the local priest about the town. See, there's nothing in the official Vatican archives about Sveti Kotar. And after coming here, I think I know why. Can we go downstairs now? I have a train to catch, and I need to find that priest before then. I'll accompany you, my brother. It's a small town. We should be able to find Victoria along our way. There's nothing more in there. It's locked. A cold breeze is caressing my face. It's soothing. I could stay here forever. I didn't notice this painting in the dark last night. I don't like the look of this woman. It's driving me mad. I don't need that. My eyes fare better in the dark. Before we step outside, you have to promise that once we find your sister, you'll talk to her. There must be no arguments or secrets in this family. Why do I have a feeling you are not leaving with me? Can't you reevaluate your decision? I'm leaving, Nikolai. We never planned to leave the next day. Didn't she tell you? This house was rented for three nights. She did not. So much about having no secrets between us. Please, leave me alone. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, sir. My name is Martin Mostov. I am a detective in the service of the town of Svetikotar. How can we help? Is there anyone else inside the house? No one. It's just me and him. Why? Where's the woman? The house is empty. What's going on? We came here looking for a woman, only to find two scared men. And who's the man in your company? Dr. Eric Hatur. Doctor? Mr. Hatur. 
Is somebody hurt? Dr. Khatur is the warden of the asylum. He helps the local police force with his knowledge of the mind. Not a man of words, Dr. Hatur. He prefers to keep quiet, just like your friend here. Are you looking for the owner of the house? Because we don't know where she is. Hand the key of the house to Mr. Hatur. Why? Just do as I say. I'm sorry. Did you say something? I heard nothing. Are we free to go now, Martin? No. You both have to follow me. Why? Yes, I'd like to know as well. Why do we have to follow you? Orders from above. How can we trust you to be what you say you are? What's with the face? You never seen a photo of a man with an intact head? It was taken before the incident. Where are you taking us? Down to the police station, where everything will be explained to you. What prevents you from discussing the matter right here and now? I'm not in the position to do that. There's a hierarchy I have to respect. Who is the woman that you seek? The woman's name... Uh, the woman's name is... Uh... Victoria. What for? Why do you need her? Uh, sir, uh, everything, everything will be explained to you in this station. Now, if you don't mind, please follow me. Whatever harrowed you through last night, it'll be nothing compared to what will happen if you do not obey. Benedict, what do you say? We have no choice. All right. We'll do as you say. Come. I guess one could get lost by looking at this mirror for too long. It's so dark that I can't see my own reflection. Anyone on the other side? I have a train to catch. Why am I being held here like some kind of sinner? Can someone tell me what this is about? I think I heard someone. I did nothing wrong, and you have no authority over me. Let me go. Place all your belongings inside the box. Push it back into the wall once you're done. Don't try to deceive us. We'll know. I'm not giving my Bible to anyone, even at the cost of being tortured and executed. He's just a brother-in-law. So, Benedict, what a strange surname. Dohnani? Dohnani. Whom do you serve, Benedict Dohnani? I serve only God. We all do. But you serve him in a different way, don't you, little priest? I'm a monk among the ranks of the Pauline Order. Ah, monkhood. A way of life in solitude and silence with God. Many believers say it's the only way to be near our Maker. What can you tell me about that brother of yours, Nikolai Kali A Kin? He is a deacon. That's not what he said to us. Are you trying to lie to me? How could he serve God if he's married to your sister? He abandoned the path to priesthood to marry her. Deacons are allowed to serve in both houses. <laughs> After such a horrible past, God had to make it up to him. What do you mean? His orphanage days. The mass grave they found at the orphanage. 
What? You must have heard about the witch nun from Minsk. Vaguely. I was very young back then. Your brother was there. He saw all those decaying child corpses in the backyard. It's horrible just thinking about it. I know nothing about him and his past. I think you're just trying to protect him. It's useless. We'll find out everything we want to eventually. It's the truth. I barely spoke a word to the man before coming here. Quite an interesting family. What time is it, officer? Time is not relevant in this moment of your life. I'm under the jurisdiction of the Vatican. You have to let me go. The church can do nothing for you here. You, like everyone else in this town, answer to me and our patron saint only. Now tell me, what brings the three of you to our little town? It's a long journey from Budapest. We were invited to attend the exhibition at the castle. And who invited you? Nobody invited me. It was my sister who was invited and who made me come along. You're lying to me. No strangers allowed to get into the castle. Invitations don't exist. Tell me the real reason. I was dragged here by my sister. What does it matter after all? We never made it there. Continue obscuring the truth, and you'll end up dragged into Akhrizat for eternity. Nikolai is a liar. He's already doomed. But you, I feel you're different. You're not like him. We know your sister was at the castle last night. She was seen by multiple witnesses. Tell me everything I need to... Are you sure that was Victoria at the castle? How was that possible? You said strangers are not welcome. Has anyone seen me or Nikolai there? I have to confess that something happened in the house we spent the night in. I don't know what exactly, but it was Victoria. She did this to me. Officer, can you hear me? Let me out! Finally! Am I free to leave now? You both have to come with me. Again. Why? Oh, where? Beyond the Wall of Crosses. At last! The grandiose Church of Mary. After so many centuries, still here, still holding up against... What are we doing here? I'm not at liberty to talk about anything. Now walk. The chief is expecting you. Ah, oh, you made it past the Wall of Crosses. Through tall trees, unmarked paths, and unnatural dreadful silence. Into the heart of darkness where you invited us to meet. We invited you? You have, with your deeds. I don't understand. What is this place? Why are we here? This church was built with one purpose only. To repel evil from the Carcassa forest. It failed miserably and was absorbed by darkness instead. Chief, we'd appreciate it if you could tell us what's going on. Words are unnecessary. Light always reveals. Lights on, officer! Now, take a good look. Someone's in the driver's seat. He looks tense, wildly moving his hands and head as if threatened. God! What? Tell us, why are we here? 
Light off! Ranko Merzel, the beloved mayor of Sveti Kotar, hanging out there all alone with a dreaded yellow mask. Underneath the mask, he has nothing left. His face ripped off, his eyes gouged out and eaten. His skull cut open, and parts of his brain eaten. All whilst alive, tortured cruelly by the moon ghouls, or those that want to become one. In the very end, his chest and abdomen were torn and his heart ripped out, to be devoured. His body is still up there. How could you possibly know all these things? We don't have to pull him down to know what happened. We've seen this too many times in our lives. Who are the Moon Ghouls? Saborans is their name. Servants of the Moon Demons. Some people believe they're not humans, but rather evil entities that take human form. We don't know who they are. They're hiding in the shadows, impossible to find. This is a horrific crime scene. We shouldn't be here. Is this the way you welcome strangers in your town? We know the mayor was murdered by Nermin, a man who decided to worship the moon deities. The past teaches us we are unable to see the true soul of other people, no matter how close they are to us. So, you interrogate strangers, and tell them of the existence of malicious beings, and in the end you show them their prey? Nermin didn't feast on the mayor's corpse alone. There was someone else who joined the ritual. The name Nermin doesn't mean anything to us. We're here for the first time in our lives, Chief. What do you want from us? Lies. All lies. Where's Victoria? Or should I call her Petra instead? What do you mean? We know she used the name Petra when introducing herself around town. Our mother's name. We just don't know where she's hiding, and we need you to tell us. We don't know. When we woke, she wasn't in the house. It was our plan to go looking for her, but then your men intercepted us. We don't know where she is. Why do you think she's hiding? Do not try to make a fool of me. She was seen pushing a man from the castle roof last night. And when we found his severed head, he wore a yellow mask. We know she helped Nermin. Her scratch pad was found up in the belfry, amongst pieces of human flesh. If you want us to search for her, fine. Once we find her, she'll face the same fate as Nermin. They'll beg us to end their lives. Why would she help Nermin, a complete stranger to her? The Saborans cult needed a witch among them. Morbidity and the occult fascinate her. She's your sister, you should know that. This is insane! My wife would never do harm to anyone, let alone join a cannibal cult! Who was the man she allegedly pushed from the roof? We are still trying to fish his body parts from the chasm below the castle. Whoever he was, he's just one piece of the puzzle. How can you be so sure of her guilt? What proof do you have? We found her belongings in the belfry, and her coat in the woods, not so far from here. Coat? Uh, how do you know it's hers? A coat, badly damaged, with blood stains. Her wallet and personal ID were inside, but we also found something else next to it. An eviscerated fetus. My sister was pregnant? She still is. Don't you understand what they're trying to do here? Victoria sacrificed her unborn child to the moon demons. <sighs> no. This is not possible. She would... She would never... We know she's hiding somewhere, and we know you're lying, which makes you her and Nermin's accomplices. 
She even tried to make us believe she killed herself after the murders. I... an accomplice? I fell asleep the moment we entered that house. I am a man of God. How dare you put such sin on my soul? I've seen many people say or think they're godly men. That means nothing. Faith is more than mere words. Why do you think she tried to fake her own death? There was a suicide note in her coat. Many have taken their own lives in this forest. She thought she could trick us with a message of repentance. Pathetic. You clearly don't have any intention to help us, but we might have means to change your mind. Chief, do you really think we would be lying? Is my wife really capable of... of committing such atrocities? Look around. Can you smell death? Can you sense wickedness? Of course I believe that. This is a cursed land. And I don't know who you are, and I don't trust you. None of you. Take them away. Make them talk. Gentlemen, you know how this works. Follow me. Why have we stopped, Detective? Someone needs to help you out. I'm letting you go. All of a sudden, you want to help us? Why? Your sister came here to join a madman? She chose this town to fulfill her occult desires? And you're helping her to hide. <laughs> That's insane. Maybe she got kidnapped by Nermin and... I don't know. You must find her as quickly as possible. Chief Norden will be furious with you. I never lie to him. Or at least it's what he thinks. He won't question my decision to let you leave. But you have to give me your word you won't leave town. We have your passports, but one can always find a way out if he wants to. We promise. I wouldn't question a word from two priests. I... promise. Start your search with the warden. Dr. Hatur? I was with him last night before the incident at the castle. He was already looking for Victoria. Before the incident? Are you sure? My head injury sometimes makes me have memory lapses, but you don't have to question my intelligence. I'm sorry, but I knew it. The moment I saw that man, I knew there was something creepy about him. I don't know how, but he might be somehow connected with her disappearance. Could he be found at a mental hospital? Oh no. You can't possibly get to the Madoff Asylum. It's off limits for non-staff or non-inmates. The doctor resides at the only lodge in this town, the Goldine Lodge. That's where you should go first. Where's this lodge located? From here, go down towards the lake. Once you reach the shore, go left. You can't miss it. Why did he stay at the house while we were being interrogated? He wanted to make sure Victoria wasn't there. But to tell you the truth, I think he had other reasons. I'm not sure. What time is it? I don't know, but it's getting late and you should act. Immediately. The train is about to leave soon. Could you give me my belongings back? That I cannot do. I'm sorry. We have to go now. A few words of advice before we part ways. There is a reason why this town looks desolate, even in broad daylight. Don't get yourself fooled by the lights you see here. This soil is cursed, and the air tainted with wickedness. I know you can sense it. It's the opposite of what you're used to. Be wary while wandering around. Under no circumstances you should go into the forest or onto the mountain. 
They are forbidden. Stick to the town. The moon ghouls are impossible to find, except for when it's too late for oneself. God bless you all. I hope you find salvation in spite of the horror all around you. We have to split, Benedict. I'm going to the lodge. You should go back to the house, in case Victoria comes back. I don't know my sister anymore. She became a person I've dreaded my whole life. She's a devil worshipper, a murderer, a person acting against God. Who is she? How could she change so much? Since when do you trust other people? They are lying, Benedict. Victoria is innocent. Did she drag me here to sacrifice me? Like she did with her unborn child? Hey, she did not do that. Our child is not dead. The chief is lying. Before this journey, when was the last time you saw her? A couple of years ago, I guess. I see and talk to her every waking hour since we married. People don't change that much. She's a good person. They don't change. They just strip the facade and show their true self. If they are lying, how do you explain her scratch pad in the belfry? I don't know. And what about her coat? Or the fact that she used my mother's name to introduce herself? We should ask if this is true. The only person she spoke to after arriving here is the lady from the souvenir shop over there. Don't forget, she was seen pushing a man from the castle's roof by multiple witnesses. Maybe she was assaulted. We don't know who that man is, and what really happened last night. If we don't succeed in finding her soon, going to the castle is something we should consider. And this is partly on us. If we weren't so weak, we wouldn't have been drowned into a nightmare cycle of dreams. Just look around you. It's already night, for God's sake. I've noticed. It means we slept for more than half a day. Even when dead tired, one can never sleep that much. It's unnatural. The house definitely did this. Because we were weak. It's my fault? It was her idea to make me come here, and she picked that damned house. How do you explain the balcony horror? You're... you're right. I'm sorry. I don't know how to explain many things. I'm just trying to find a meaning in all this madness. We should move, brother. She might already be back at the house. Or in danger at the hands of that warden. No. I'm leaving. You what? I'm leaving. Going back to Budapest. You won't make it past the border. You don't have your passport. I'll be fine. Given the circumstances, Father Imre will understand why I didn't talk to the priest of Svetikotar. But he will judge you if you leave your sister here. I don't care about Victoria and what she got into. God will be her judge. God will condemn you for leaving your sister to die here. Open your eyes! She's the only real family you have. My family died the day my father left us. I'm with God alone now. If you leave, you will pursue your own selfish desires, not his will and words. She was accused wrongly. You need to stay here and help me find her in the name of faith.
You think she might be back at the house? Could be. It's the only place where she knows we might be. Are you going to help me? I'm going to the house, and if she's there, I'm leaving at once. You both wait on me, but stay out of the house and hide somewhere outside. The warden or the police might come back. I'm going to the lodge. Be careful. It leads towards the bridge to the police station. I'm not going in that direction now. For some people, this stone is the only hope they have left. Haven, last seen on the last day of February, 1993. Young Kadia, missing his love since June. Beloved wife and mother, Melita Lovnyak, missing since October 1991 at the entrance of Karkasa. Anyone found my legs yet? Our beloved priest and friend. Madam? Do I look like a madam to you? Well... You're going to make me blush, sir. Welcome to my little hut. My name's Ida. Ida Lavnyak. I already know your name. How? Do I know you? Not really, but you know my sister. I was with her last night. Oh, yes, I remember now. The shy and anxious older brother, Benedict. Or should I say, Monk Benedict. <laughs> she said that? No, sir. It's just the way you looked. Why didn't you come closer when we called you? Her eyes focused somewhere behind me, with a weary and terrified gaze. It's all right. You don't have to answer. Where's Victoria? I don't know. I was hoping you could help me. Have you seen her today? No, no, I don't think so. Last night, did she come back after we left the square? There were a lot of people here long after that, and I was preparing to close, so I really couldn't say. What's going on? She disappeared. Oh no, not her, not again. I hope she's not another victim of the moon. She was seen pushing a man from the castle's roof last night. I heard about that accident this morning. She did that. She really pushed that man. Eyewitnesses saw her. Liars. Who are these people? Does it really matter? You... you believe their story. You really think she did it. You've heard about the mayor. Heard what? They found his body in the forest. What? Who told you that? The police forced me to see it. The body was hanged from the belfry of the Church of Mary. Mutilated, disemboweled, and half-eaten by the crows. Those animals. I, I, I'm sorry you had to see that. Poor Mayor. I light up a candle for him today. What can you tell me about Nedman? Never seen him, but have heard and retold many stories about him. What do you want to know? It's a small town. How come you've never seen him? Because he's one of those who lives under the moonlight, while the rest of us do our best to keep away from it. A moon ghoul? The worst of them all. I feel lost now. Why are you asking me all these questions? And you didn't answer me. 
You think your sister pushed that man? You really think she's capable of doing it? I know her very little, but I know those accusations that are absurd. She is capable, and I believe she did it. Listen carefully. Her husband Nikolai and I are now suspects. The police think we are hiding her somewhere, which makes us look like accomplices of Nermin. She did something to keep us stuck in the house. We woke up having no memory of what happened last night. At the same time, she was seen by multiple witnesses pushing a man from the roof. In the vicinity of Merzel's body, they found her coat and other belongings. She was there. She did it. She helped Nermin. Uh, I don't know what to say except that Victoria is a good person. She looks so gentle and vulnerable. Like a butterfly. I refuse to believe these things, but I could be wrong. I'm sorry, Benedict. How can I help? I don't know. Maybe you can't. Maybe only God can do something. Not even God. She's lost forever. What book are you reading? The Divine Comedy. I needed something to cheer me up. <laughs> so where's Dante now? Who? Dante, the hero of the book. In what part of the book are you now? Oh yes, how silly of me. He's in a dark forest and there are beasts he cannot evade. I think they symbolize something else. Sins. The beasts represent the self-indulgent, the violent, and the malicious. Oh, that's interesting. You know, the book intrigued me because the descriptions of where he is in the beginning reminded me of this valley. Does that make sense to you? I told this to my father and he scolded me right away. You are quite right, madam. <laughs> now all we need is our Virgil to rescue us. Where should I look for Victoria? She won't come out in the open. It would be too risky. Well, if I were you, I'd start my search in the forest. In Carcassa? Udav Mountain could be a good place to start, too. But I've never been there, so I can't give guidance. Carcassa and Udav are forbidden places, aren't they? I don't believe what they say about them. The forest is a beautiful place. The tall trees, Pepel, the river spring, and the silence. Listen. Search the forest. Make sure not to get caught while entering, and keep your eyes open once inside. You'll be fine. Who decided to forbid these places? Ironically, the same man that was found dead in the heart of the forest, Mayor Ranko Merzel. You think his death had something to do with the decision? No, I don't know. The proof of fate is a decree that he put in place soon after taking control of the town. It's a decree that compels people to stay away from the places on the list, and to report suspicious activities and misbehavior. Such as? Blasphemous and heretical talk, to name a few. But the decree's main objective is to find and execute those against or unfaithful to God. She sounds like she doesn't approve of this. I guess it's a good thing. I don't know. You don't adhere to the law. Not in this case, at least not entirely. You know. And please don't say this to anyone, or you'll have me tortured and killed, all right? Go on. I promise. Carcassa has been like my second home in the last few years. I can't get enough of its silence. I know, I know what you are going to say. It's dangerous, dark, and forbidden. But listen to me. Sometimes it gets dangerous, true. And the mayor's death proves it. But isn't that normal? It's life. It's people. It's life? Everything here feels rotten and reeks of death. Don't say that. And don't talk to others this way. If we stop dreaming and lose hope, what do we have left? Look, I don't know if you should go into the forest. I don't want to get you in trouble or killed. I have no idea where you should look, really. I'm sorry. Oh, wait, I have something here. 
It might not tell you where to go, but at least give you some orientation. A map of the town and its surroundings. How does that sound? Sure. Thank you. Glad I could do something. Just be careful. How come you weren't dressed as a priest last night? <laughs> ah, that question. Excuse me? Oh, sorry, nothing against you. But it's the same annoying question that keeps coming back at me, like a bat flapping in circles year after year. I see October 28th on the calendar, and I know what's coming to bite me. So what's the reason? I tell everyone I can't wear it because I have to work. But the truth is... I don't believe it would make a difference if I did. In general, the ritual doesn't make a difference. Why does everyone else wear it? Because the inhabitants believe we are all disciples of Ivan Kotar, and so we have to dress like them on the day. Not just in the evening, when the effigy is set on fire, but all the time, from dawn to dusk. But what is the reasoning behind it? The dress is just a terrifying shadow of what a priest's robe should look like. There's a belief that wearing it scares off demons, witches, and other evil spirits. I guess the darker it looks, the scarier it is. I don't know. The effigy turned into ash last night. What does it represent? A demon slave of the moon god. The effigy ritual marks the end of the day of Ivan Kotar. People gather on the square, they pray and chant as one voice. Which sounds beautiful. It's the best part. No, it's the only part of the day I love. I thought the exact opposite. It was a disturbing scene and I felt true, primal fear. Then the mayor comes out, and everyone stops, and when the last words leave his mouth, the effigy is finally set on fire. Has anyone been hurt over the years? The fire spreads very quickly, a wide and massive whirl as if ignited from the darkest of places. No, not that I recall. I don't know. Why? Yes, and because it could come down at any moment. It's so tall, the nearby buildings could be hit. Nothing to worry about. God is protecting them. Or at least it's what they believe. Oh, and those who are tasked with creating the effigy are given a free pass into the forest. Can you guess why? No. You haven't even tried to guess. Because it's made of black wood, plant roots and undergrowth from Carcassa. Slaves of the moon god supposedly live or dwell as spirits if they are dead inside the forest and so, you know, some of the townsfolk even swear to hear the wailing of demons the whole night after the fire. I don't know. Your last name is Lovniak, right? Not a hard guess. It's on the sign. Melita is your mother? She is... was. Why? What happened to her? We don't know. She just disappeared. Exactly five years ago, yesterday. Did she die or just go missing? I remember it as if it were yesterday. We went to the church, prayed, wore the disciple dresses, scared some kids. So much fun and joy. A long time ago she came up with this crazy thought. When I grow up, we will have a day only for us. Just the two of us, without father. And so, over the years, it became a tradition. Father was so jealous, but happy. We were all happy. Anyway, tired and feeling sick, I chose to go home that day right before the effigy ritual. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. It's all right. On my way out of here, I turned around and she looked at me with those beautiful green eyes and... and I remember... 
I remember seeing them change color. Her neck bent awkwardly, both eyeballs instantly became blood red, and I heard her screaming even if her mouth didn't open. We don't know what exactly happened to her, but since it was a full moon night, we just knew. Forgive me, but... You didn't ask around if anyone saw something? Father did, and the only information he managed to get after all these years is that she was last seen entering the Carcassa forest, alone. So she wasn't actually taken away? Of course she was. I don't believe what the police said. Why would she go into the forest on her own? She was terrified of it. It just doesn't make any sense. Nothing makes sense anymore. Something is off here. Are you sure her eyes changed color? Absolutely. Why? You said they were blood red, right? Correct. The same color as the leaves on this tiny tree you have. So? Maybe in the moment you saw the blood red color of the leaves, your mind just thought it was her eyes. No, Benedict. Her neck bent and her eyes turned blood red and I heard her scream. Memories can be deceitful. I planted this tree after she went missing, because the color of its leaves reminded me of that day. It reminds me of her, and my guilt. Notice the vase. That's her. That's my mother's vase. I recreated her entire head. Surely a morbid way to remember a loved one. Excuse me. Sure. Tiny chairs of torture and bells. I must say they are faithfully recreated to the smallest detail. Weird executioner masks. They genuinely look old. The tree Ida planted to remember her mother and her guilt. The leaves are blood red and the vase symbolizes her mother's head. It evokes a repulsive feeling, and I guess that is its purpose, but I'm not sure it's something God would approve of, no matter the cause. Souvenirnica Lavenyak. Ah, the drawing makes perfect sense. Lav in Croatian should mean lion. It's the path towards the lake and the lodge. I should go back to the house first. I wasn't sure I heard a voice, but I did. Victoria is here. It's dark, and my eyes could be deceiving me, but that doesn't seem to be... Who goes there? I'm Lucia, the owner of this house. I apologize, miss. I'm Benedict. Victoria is my sister. Who's Victoria? Rough day, sorry. I meant Petra. Petra is my sister. I didn't know she had a brother, and that he was coming with her to Spetikotar. Nobody knew. It was a last minute decision. So where is she now? We're trying to find her. We? Who is we? 
And are there more people I don't know about? Her husband, Nikolai, came as well. I was told she was to come alone on Friday, October 28th. Rented the house for three nights. Said she wants to give herself a gift for the soul. A strange woman, I tell you that. Something happened? Nothing in particular. We woke up and she was gone. <laughs> She's probably sightseeing. One can easily get lost in the beauty of the place. Lose track of time? What happened here? I didn't want to yell at you, but since you're asking, you tell me. I almost fainted out of sorrow after opening the door. Look at my bust, reduced to pieces. Somebody has to pay for the damage. Animals. You'll have to ask the warden to pay for that. We left the house untouched. The warden? What warden? Dr. Hatur? Yes, Dr. Hatur. But I did nothing wrong. Why would he come to my house? Was he looking for me? I don't know. He didn't tell us the reason and we couldn't argue. A detective was with him. Maybe... Maybe they saw my art as blasphemous and heretical. Maybe they'll take me into the asylum. That's why he destroyed the bust in the stoop. He was sending a message. I'm doomed! He won't take further action. What do you mean? He was here for me! Why would he cause this damage without taking you in? It doesn't make sense. You think? This looks like he was just giving a warning. Maybe because of something else you did. I don't know what I did, but I can live with a warning. I'll try to be more careful from now on. Thank you, my friend. Weren't you supposed to welcome us last night? I told your sister I'll leave the key at the neighbor's, and that I'll pass by later, after the castle. You were at the castle? Sure. Did you see me there? I was there only for a brief time. Couldn't stand all those people. But how could I see you when everyone has to wear... Wait a minute. Did you go inside without a mask? No, of course not. Was she here after you came by? I didn't make it. This right here is me visiting after the castle. <laughs> you are a strange person. No wonder you two are relatives. Why are you asking all these questions? Because she stayed in the house and fell asleep. And when I came back, I couldn't find her. I don't know her whereabouts since last night. You know, if you don't trust her, you should just talk to her. But if you already did, then my only advice is to talk to Madame Vera, my neighbor. She may be old, but she never misses a thing. Always lurking from that window of hers. I can do that. If you just knock, she will pretend to be dead. She doesn't like strangers. You must introduce yourself to her. Say exactly who you are and why you are looking to talk to her. Tell the truth. I heard that she had some sort of visions of the life of Ivan Kotar, the patron saint of the town. It's what allowed her to sneak into other people's houses as a babysitter. I'll try to talk to her. And do not go knocking on the door. She hates that. Have you had any strange dreams in this house? Whenever I don't have guests, I sleep here. And guests are as rare as the sun in this town. My dreams are always great. Why? It's just that both Nikolai and I had a rough night's sleep with harrowing dreams. That must have been the demon of tiredness, not the house. You had a long drive yesterday. We opened the balcony door and found a strange mass. So it was you who broke the glass on the door? No, I, I just opened it. I promise. <sighs> Maybe those bloody crows did it. Wouldn't be the first time. It started recently. They come to the balcony raking in mud, small twigs, and other crow filth. I tried to scare them off, but nothing is working. And they are very aggressive. I can't light a candle anymore. Whenever I do, they swarm outside and start scratching at the windows and door. The balcony is where they gather and ultimately die. It's like their graveyard or something. I can't explain it. If they don't back off soon, I'll have to start taking action. I don't want my guests to feel threatened. Do you mind if I look around the house a bit? Not at all. You're allowed to stay here for two more nights. Unless you want to pay to stay longer, of course. That is something you should discuss with my sister. I couldn't have missed the tallest building out here. This must be the lodge where Hatur resides.
My name is Luca. At your service. The guest rooms are upstairs, right? Sir, only the guests who are chosen are allowed to see the rooms. How can I be chosen? Sir? You said I have to be chosen to go upstairs. Right. I don't know how you can be chosen. But who's choosing? And why? Mr. Wilde. He's not here at the moment, and I don't know when he will return. Apologies, sir. Luca, if you'll excuse me. Certainly, sir. No food in there. Just some tiny crumbs. I wonder, what's the story behind this bricked up passage? Nicholas Handel. Not sure about its usage. It simply looks like a hall. The clock is dead at the stroke of midnight. Franco Merzel. Martin Zuderfleet. Natalia Pieterzak. Timo. Renate Zimmermann. Victor, the 152 cat compa. Patrick Paverick Meyer. Fran Merzel. Zazu. Peter Stiebel. Lake Kubilius. Michael Schminder. Jensen Cook. Ivan Goldin. I'm not allowed to go upstairs. Pula. Seems to be a painting of the place. An old coastal town with a Roman Colosseum. I see an executioner talking to small-sized men and women. I think they're about to be slaughtered. Several people are calling for help, drowning in the ocean. Angels look down on them from the safety of the sky, proud of themselves. Elderly women dancing with a tall, dark man around a bonfire. They seem to be happy. 
a man standing at the entrance of the forest, weighing whether he should venture forth. I'm looking for Dr. Hatur. I have an appointment with him. No, you don't. Excuse me? How would you know that? The warden takes no visitors here, only in the asylum. And I trust you are well aware you don't want to be a patient of his. Can you tell me where the doctor's room is? I don't know where it is. What do you mean? You are the receptionist here. I never saw Mr. Golden's room. I only heard about it from Mr. Wilde. I have to speak to Mr. Hatur, not Mr. Goldin. I know, but like I said, I never saw his room. Dr. Hatur resides in Golden's former room. How is it possible that you don't know each and every room in this building? Have you just started working here? No, sir. I'm working here for quite some time, actually. But I'm not allowed to see Golden's room, and I don't know where it's located. How can I find Hatur, then? I don't know. Is he even in the lodge? Yes, he is. Look, you should probably ask Mr. Wilde about everything you need or want. I'm just the receptionist here. Where is Mr. Wilde? He's not here. I know. I can see that. Where can I find him? You can't. He finds you. I saw the dark room and the figures in there. We call it the bust room. Who are those people? Not people, just sculptures made in their honor. That's what I meant. Why did you decide to honor those people? I decided nothing, sir. The owner did. Fran Merzel. Who are they? Fran, the previous owner who renovated the place. His son, Ranko, who served as fresh meat for the crows earlier today. Golding, the original owner of this building, who also designed and built it. And several former guests who had lost themselves in the maze outside. Lost? They died in the maze? A few of them are still alive, but lost mentally. For eternity. How's that possible? The maze is a dangerous place, sir. As old as this very building. No one alive or mentally stable knows what's really at its core. It was devised by Mr. Golden for reasons known only to Mr. Wilde. He's been inside the maze. Mr. Wilde? He was. In fact, only those who haven't been chosen were lost. If Mr. Wilde chooses you, you are safe to go. Otherwise, you venture into your doom. Why would anyone want to go inside the maze? There are stories going around. The townies, especially the elderly ones, say that Mr. Golden hid a treasure at its center. Some people come to Svetikota only for the maze, and then they go inside without being chosen. Fools. Someone could just force his way through the wall of shrubs, or take them down entirely. The maze cannot be touched. It's forbidden to do so, and the shrubbery is deadly poisonous. That bricked up passage over there. Yes. What happened? It was bricked up. Why? Oh, I'm not sure, sir. That was long before my time. I just heard stories. Tell me more. I can't. All I can say is there is another way to get inside that room. Where? How do I find it? I don't know, and if I did, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Apologies, sir. Who is Mr. Goldine? The architect employed by the church in medieval times. He came to town with the Inquisition, designed and oversaw the construction of the castle, church, and court. He liked the place so much he decided to stay and built this lodge for himself. Lived with his cats until he vanished one day. Vanished forever. What happened to him? Disappeared. That's all I know. Mr. Wilde surely knows more, but he doesn't want to tell anyone. Do you have a cat or a dog? 
No, we don't. Then why do you have a ball down there? That belongs to the king in yellow. Do you want to tell me who that is? No, sir, I can't tell you who he is. Mr. Wilde is the only one who can. This king in yellow, cat or dog, whatever it is, could be the key to find Mr. Wilde. And if I can get to him, I would be allowed access to Hatur's room. Luca, if you'll excuse me. Certainly, sir. The clock is dead at the stroke of midnight. I can't. I must be chosen to get inside. Just a boat, floating alone in the fog. Hello, youngster. What's your name? Anton. What are you doing here? Fishing. At night? Best time. It's dangerous to be out here at night, especially for a child. Why? Didn't you hear what happened to your mayor? And what about those moon things? You mean the moon ghouls? I saw them once here on the lake. What do they look like? What are they? Yellow. Their whole body is yellow, except for the faces. They don't have faces. Their faces are shadows. You were hidden somewhere? They saw me, but they could do nothing. Dr. Hatur was taking them away. Where did he take them? I don't know. The doctor told me to go away. I didn't look back. He's always good to me. Always gives me food. Says I have to gain weight. How's your fishing going? Badly. Wouldn't you need a fishing rod? Net? Or anything that could help you with that? I'm not trying to catch them. I'm just calling them. I want to see them. <sighs> The lake seems lifeless to me. Are you sure this is the right place to fish? I know it is. Mother Evelina told me. So your mother told you to come to this very pier at night to try to catch some fish? She must be an exemplary parent. She is good to me. She loves me. Look. <laughs> she made this dress with bells just for me. <laughs> Others don't have dress like this. Others? Who are they? My brothers. Why would she give you a dress with bells? I can call for help when others are mean to me. Evelina always comes. Why do you let your brothers be mean? 
fight for yourself. I don't want to be mean towards strangers. Mother Evelina says it is impolite. Your siblings can't be strangers to you. You live in the same house, eat the same food, maybe even sleep in the same room. We live together, but they are still strangers. See, I think they know where their parents are. I don't. Kid, are you all right? No. I want to find my parents. So, Evelina is not your mother? She told me my mother and father are living here now. Somewhere inside Lake Harley. I'm trying to call them. I want to see them. <sighs> Do you live in an orphanage, perhaps? I live in a big house. Above our roof is a giant tower with giant bells. And we have a big courtyard. With a big wall and tall trees that prevent demons and evil spirits to visit us when they leave their underground beds. You know, when I was your age, I lived in a house such as yours. Evelina was your mother too? No, my mother's name was Olga. Was she as good as my mother? She always protected me from my brothers and sisters. You also had a dress like mine? With bells? No, but I would have loved to have one. <laughs> Do you have spare bait? Why? I need food for a pet. He is hiding, and I need to lure him out. You want to see the king in yellow? How did you know? He's beautiful. That is why. Everyone wants to see the king in yellow. What are you doing, kid? That must be painful. Take it. This will definitely help you. He loves my skin. Mother Evelina says I can't feel pain. I use skin to cool my mother and father too. But they don't seem to love it. Only the king in yellow does. Thank you, Anton. But don't do that anymore. It could be dangerous if it gets infected. <laughs> Take care. Goodbye. Mr. Wilde has chosen you. Where is he? You called him. He answered. You can see him now. This room is the same as before. Except for this yellow cat that just showed up. That is him. The king in yellow is Mr. Wilde. Mr. Wilde is the king in yellow. Mr. Wilde is a cat? Mr. Wilde is the name of his earthly being. The body has an essence, a soul. That soul is the king in yellow. You can think of yourself as a lucky man. He loves to eat human skin. But I think he chose you because of the circumstances. What circumstances? Strange is the night when dark arises On a strange night like this with a full moon Stranger still is the lost man Lost in Carcassa woods Dr. Hatur sang today's circumstances in sorrow But the king loves this song So what now? Ask the king in yellow I'm just his servant I have to talk to a cat. 
Is this man one of Hatur's patients on the loose? I would like your permission to go upstairs. I have to talk to Hatur. The king says you are not allowed. You may, though, go to his room. If I don't go upstairs, how... where can I find his room? There is a passage leading to it. The king will not help you find it, but neither will he obstruct you. What are you doing? What's going on? I'm not allowed to see it. You are free to step inside, though beware. It is a one-way pass. Once you get in, there is no coming back. You will have to find another way out. Can I go into the maze? The king says you are allowed to go. Nothing bad will happen to me? You are afraid of who you are. What does that mean? That it is safe for you. I'm only the messenger. The king says you may go. Do not seek further instruction. Just go and don't look back. Not everyone has this opportunity. Excuse me. Lucas said it's not possible to come back. Am I really ready to go in? I'm going in. Uh, what is this place? It's like I entered into a hellish nightmare. And there's no going back now. Kelly Sue Drayton. How is this possible? I remember this painting from the orphanage. My brothers and sisters from the orphanage. Horrible souls deserve a horrible fate. My father, he used to tell me I'm nothing but a sin and called me God's degenerate. My mother, the only person who stood up for me. I must be losing my mind. Mother, is that really you? Why am I seeing you? The painting from the orphanage, how did it end up in this place? Lies. In the real painting, I was standing by your side, and there were no other children. Mother. I was waiting for you. Demonic slave! Where is she? Where's my mud? Hideous. It's full of dead crows. Dozens and dozens of them. I don't need it. 
This woman eerily reminds me of Victoria in her younger days, back when I could rely on her, instead of having to fear her. some reason someone decided to wrap the carpet and put it here. Everything is as we left it, but the crow's head is missing, and there's broken glass on the floor now. Must have been the warden who did this. What use is there in throwing books on the floor? This bookshelf was full of books before. A lot of them are missing now. A giant bowl made out of clay, filled with what seems to be some type of oil. It's a giant tree with dozens of corpses hanging from its branches, and skulls that feed its roots. We left it on the table, with its front side facing the wall. Now it's up again, looking at me with those mean eyes. It's locked. Madam Vera? Hello? Graveyard silence. Madam Vera? My name is Benedek. I spent the night at your neighbor's. Could I ask you some questions? The woman that came with me is my sister. We can't find her today. Did you see if she left the house sometime after we arrived last night? Have you seen her today, perhaps? Who are you? My name is Benedek, and... Vera is old, not deaf. Who are you? Benedek, I'm a monk from Budapest. What do you want from me, monk? I'm trying to find my sister. Have you seen her? No, but I heard last night. After we arrived? Much later, in the night, with a man. 
What man? Nikolai? No. The one who came here earlier today stayed in the house. The warden? Dr. Hathor? Him. The man with the demonic voice. What did Hathor and my sister do? Went into the forest together, talked there for a while, then silence. Where in the forest? At the crossroad, go straight into the forest. It's where the path leading from the town ends? Just go inside there. Once you find it, you will know. Did you hear what they talked about? No, sounded like whispering, praying, chanting. Can you describe Hator? What is it? My eyes were taken from me. God has his ways. I'm sorry. God has nothing on this. I deserve punishment. I deserve solitude. You still questioning my words. I am sure I didn't see him, but it is the same man that stayed in the house. The demonic voice. I'm having a hard time reading your chalkboard. Why can't you talk? Piece of chalkboard. School damaged object. A present from someone special to me. I asked if you could talk, madam. Tongue was torn out. I am eyeless and wordless. Terrible fate. I can't imagine the pain. I heard about your visions. I still have them. Visions of Ivan Kotar? His birth, life, the horrors of Udav, death in church. Can you tell me a bit more? <laughs> visions are mine, don't want to talk about. Who made you blind and mute? No need to tell me, I just... The body of my sister. Your sister did this to you? A corpse now, she had to do it. It is my fault. Your sister, family. What could you have done to deserve such a cruel punishment? I provoked. I need to suffer for my faith. It is all I have left. Don't ask again. Excuse me. You are damaged. Missing soul you have. Excuse me? Cursed, like me, but a good man. Help me find the love of my life. He disappeared. Madam, I can't. As soon as I find my sister, I'm leaving and not coming back. Search for her at the same time. Look for him. I don't know this place. I don't know anyone here. Everyone knew my love. On a full moon night, he disappeared. You have to understand, it will take a miracle for me to find anyone in this valley. Uh, but tell me, what is his name? Yakov Pranger, town's former... A priest was your lover? He was to renounce his service, not faith. Dear God, I'll see what I can do. I have to go now. The Catechism says, after an angel decides to sin, he falls from heaven and becomes a demon.
Who keeps a dead tree? I should wait here for now. The fireplace. It's full of dead crows. I know. I've put them there. Why? To get rid of the bodies. Why else? But I am all out of matches, so for now, they just have to lay in the cold. You don't mind, do you? No, not at all. It's your house. But you're my guest. It's my duty to make your stay comfortable. This woman and her house are beyond salvation. Never mind. The path the old lady told me about. It's too dark and terrifying. All sorts of negative emotions are hitting me in this blackness, and I can't see a thing. I need light. Do you mind if I take this lamp? Huh. That dust collecting thing is here because I inherited it with the house. Go ahead, but don't forget to return it. Sometimes it gets very dark in this valley. Without a lamp, I could get lost. Darker than this? It appears to be empty. I need to find some oil to make it work. This should be enough. It has enough oil to work.
If I didn't come here, thoughts like this would never cross my mind. I struggled to find a reason to do that. It's locked. Blasphemous Basin is destroyed. I approve of the act. Never mind. Everything is as we left it, but the crow's head is missing, and there's broken glass on the floor now. I have no faith in the outcome.
Do you happen to have any spare matches? You are afraid of darkness. Look into the angel's vase. Take what you find. I will. Thank you, Madam Vera. Excuse me. The Catechism says, after an angel decides to sin, he falls from heaven and becomes a demon. I can see a matchbox, which I'm taking, and a strange crucifix that looks more like a weapon of sorts. I believe it could kill a beast. As long as I'm trapped in this valley, I might need it. And since Vera wrote I could take whatever I find in here, I'm taking that too. I don't need more light here. That's a strange notion. Oh my god, this is horrible. I've never seen so many. It's a dumping site. Two different kinds of footprints here. Fresh footprints. No way I can be sure one of them belongs to Victoria, but this proves Vera was right. She wasn't imagining the whispers from the woods. I wonder, how could my sister possibly know the warden? Where did they meet? He was looking for her last night before the incident, and then they talked afterwards here. Why? Something must have happened to her in the last few years. Both of our parents perished, and now our bloodline is cursed. It's not a fairy tale, it's our reality. I have to go to the lodge, tell Nikolai I was right. He can do whatever he wants after that. I did my part. I'm leaving. No one can judge me or condemn me after. I have to get out of here immediately!
With a bit of God's help and quick feet, I may be able to get to the lodge, then straight to the station before the last train leaves. <sighs> My back. It hurts so bad. I haven't walked so quickly since I was a first grader. I'm not climbing up that thing. It looks unstable. Besides, I have no reason to do it. All alone here? Where's everyone else? Where's your owner? Come over here! Through the passage! Ivan Goldin. It's empty, but I can see some fresh drops of blood in there. Disgusting. If I didn't come here, thoughts like this would never cross my mind. The king says you are here to see that friend of yours. I'm trying to find Nikolai, not a friend. I don't know the man's name, but since we don't get many visitors, that must be him. If you find him, tell him he owes me a pack of matches. I had to light a lot of candles because of him. Why? What happened? When he got in here, all the lights in the lodge went out. I've never felt a stronger, more bone-chilling draft in my life. Where did he go afterwards? Certainly not back through the lobby as the door was closed. He could only have gone in one direction, into the tower. And from there, who knows? This building is full of secret passageways. Where did he go afterwards? Certainly not back through the lobby as the door was closed. He could only have gone in one direction, into the tower. And from there, who knows? This building is full of secret passageways. What caused the draft? I don't know. Something from the tower, I suppose. The king does not want to tell me. He's playing awfully coy about this. Nikolai didn't cause the draft, then? Yes, he did. This hallway leads to Mr. Golden's room, where your friend was headed. He caused the draft. Could you go upstairs and check for him? I can wait in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never been in this part of the lodge before. Never in the tower. And never in the warden's room. No way. He's your friend. You should go. I already told you he's not my friend. Whatever. You have no choice. The king is telling me you have to go in there. On one condition, though. I won't see him anymore. So you have to pay for his debt. What would that be? I'll give you a clue. What do I need to repel darkness in the Lodge? You need to stop believing in that king of yours. Turn to God instead. I need something that makes fire. That's all. Pay for the debt, and I'll let you go upstairs. Who is your king? The king in yellow. He who opens passages. Where is he? Spiritually, everywhere. Physically, 
right now, in the lobby. And Yellow. A cat is your king? He is everyone's king. He only chooses to appear as a cat. Do not deceive yourself in thinking he is merely a pet. He gets angry easily, and you don't want to get him angry. Here, Nikolai's debt. You may go into the tower now. Where are you going? Now that I have this matchbox, I have work to do. Couldn't you at least wait here? Sorry, sir. I wasn't supposed to even see the hallway. I'm sure that god of yours will help you get out of there. Wait! I could have just left this town. Sometimes I don't understand myself. It looks shockingly similar to the cat in the lobby. It has a menacing stance, as if safeguarding its master. A man proudly seated in his king-sized chair, surrounded by cats. Could be someone important. A congress of felines. Some people worship them and think they are superior animals. This room appears empty, but the candles are still lit. The book's title is An Inhabitant of Sabor. Not sure why I would need one. Not sure why I would need one. A couple of books regarding the human mind, and a quill that was used on a piece of paper to draw. Wooden twigs tied with tiny threads, or plant roots. Three triangles tied in the middle, with another twig. This is beyond my interest of knowing. It must be witchcraft, or something to worship the devil. Seven symbols, all very different from one another. The round one could be an iteration of the accursed evil eye. I could be wrong, but there seems to be something reflective at the end of the hole. I'd need something long enough to reach it. Using one of these might help me to reach the end of that hole. secret passage. A dense fog rises above the lake, creeping inland. It could be a trap, but I have no other choice. I have to descend. It was a harrowing walk. There was no light. Every step I made was a danger. The child at the end of the pier surely must have seen Nikolai and the warden come out of here. I should ask. Hi, little one. Can I ask you some questions? I'm not little one. I'm Anton. 
Anton, have you seen anyone coming out of that tunnel? I saw you. That is good, but anyone before me? Two men. One had the eyes of a dead man. Where did they go? They drove away with the boat. Disappeared into the fog. Eyes of a dead man. Was he dead? He was breathing. The warden dragged him. Do you come here often? Fishing, yes. So you know the warden? Of course. He is always good to me. Always gives me food. Says I have to gain weight. You think he took the other man to the asylum? No. He uses the boat only when meeting with the moon ghouls. They always go to the same place. It's on the other side of the lake. How do you know about that place? My mother Evelina told me all about it. Nothing else is in that direction. What did she say about the place? Kleck. That is the name. When night falls, witches gather on that hill. They sing and dance in front of three white fingers. Mother says they once belonged to an evil giant. Who belonged? The fingers or the witches? <laughs> Fingers! Witches come to collect to call the demons from the mountain. They make and eat babies together. What kind of woman tells stories like this to a child? You saw the moon ghouls? More than once. And they did nothing to you? They could not. Dr. Hatur was taking them away with the boat. Are they man or beast? Both. Their whole body is yellow. They don't have faces. Their faces are shadows. Isn't it dangerous to be out at this hour of night? Day, night, it's all the same to me. The only thing that matters is to finally find my mother and father. Where are they? In the lake, hiding from me. Who told you that? Evelina. And now you are here fishing for your parents? Yes, but they don't love my skin. Or maybe they can't smell it in the water of the lake. I don't know. I have to go now. What are you going to do? Who could help me get to Kleck? You need a boat. You can't walk there. It is too far away. And you can't swim. Harley is home to my mother and father. They would be angry if you did. So, where can I find a boat? On my way here, I always pass by the old man. He has a boat. Arsen is his name. Just walk into the woods left of the lodge. His house is on a small island. Take care, little one. <laughs> Take care, little priest. And if you see my mother and father, please tell them I'm waiting here. Which path should I take? An old boat. It's covered with a tarp. Arson? Who is it? It's Benedict, sir. 
sorry to disturb you, but I've been told you could help me. Who told you that? A boy named Anton. What do you want? Is that boat over there yours? What are you, Benedek? What do you mean? I don't know you. You don't live here. Who are you? I am Benedek Dohnani. I serve God. You are a priest. A monk from Budapest. Good. We shall continue this conversation then. I need to get to the other side of the lake. It's important. You can walk or swim. How long would it take me to get to Klek on foot? Klek? Probably a day. The lake doesn't look inviting to dip in, and it's cold. Didn't you just say it's important? If it is, you can do it. Why would you want to visit that damned locality? A man I'm trying to find could be there. You strangers. Why even come to this town? It wasn't my choice. Either way, you are a captive now. We are all captives of this place. Imprisoned souls waiting for our savior. Sir, with all due respect, this town needs a legion of exorcists to be saved. It needs just one soul with pure faith. One man, one soul to free us all. About the boat. You can't have it. Oh, I didn't mean... I, I, I've never used one. I thought that maybe you could go with me. No! The boat is occupied and no one can use it. And even if it wasn't, I am too old and too weak to board it. Occupied by what? You have my permission to uncover the top. Why don't you just tell me? It's better if you see it with your own eyes. Do you know anyone else who could lend me a boat? No one goes to the lake. There are no other boats. That's a lie. What about the boat at the lodge? You don't want to find yourself on that one. It belongs to the asylum. I'm the only one with a boat. No other inhabitant has one. Why would they? There's nothing here, and it's dangerous. What places do you recommend I visit while in town? You don't get to explore this place. If it doesn't devour you first, then only by the grace of God did you escape its swallow. We are surrounded by Carcassa in every direction. The Udav Mountain above us, and the Henna River and Lake Holly lay dead below. No animals live in this valley, except for the damned crows. Nothing grows or breathes inside these waters. We see death everywhere. People still live here. It amazes me. This is a valley of righteous men and women. We may be scared with one foot in our graves, but we never lose faith and we never succumb to darkness. A day will come when the light will win. What did last night's effigy symbolize? You were there? Unfortunately. I never do. I don't like crowded places. But I could see the fire from here, and it was beautiful. We torch it every year on the day of our patron saint, Ivan Kotar. The giant symbolizes a member of the Saboran tribe. Yesterday was October 28th. What happened on that day? The day Ivan Kotar was murdered. Murdered? Yes, we celebrate, nay, glorify the final moment of Kotar's long sacrifice for our ancestors, and thus, for us. Who murdered him? Decapitated by Vatican emissaries. For what reason? Accused of allying himself with the darkness from the mountain. It's... It was such a horrible, horrible decision. Poor man gave his life for this town and its inhabitants, only to end up locked in his room and ultimately slain like an animal. The more I hear about this town and its mysteries, I just can't believe it.
What do you know about the moon ghouls? They are everywhere. In the water, in the town, and the forest, on the mountain, and in the mala. Mala? What is that? It's what you strangers call a fog. Hell, even some Katarians call it that because they don't know or don't want to accept the truth. The moon ghouls are in the fog? Mala is not what it seems to be. It is not fog. You feel any humidity? Have you noticed the ground? It is completely dry. Because Mala is not a mass of water particles. What is Mala then? The remains of dead Saborans, or as many prefer to call them, Moon Ghouls. They think if they don't pronounce the tribe's true name that they will be safe, which is nothing but a fallacy. Like I said and thought a hundred times before, this place is doomed. We just need one man, a savior. Someone like our Ivan Kotar from the past. Have you seen a female stranger lately? No. No? Without even giving it a thought first? No one visits me except Ida, the souvenir shopkeeper. I am sure I saw no female strangers in years. What do you do here? Trying to stay alive for as long as possible. I mean, what do you do for a living? I sell fish. That old camper across the bridge is yours? Yes. It was home to my parents before they settled in Sveti Kotar. They were... Wanderers? I wanted to save fools. I loved them. But for God's sake, why choose this town to start a family? We don't get to pick our parents. And yet whatever they do, we never stop loving them. Maybe it's not love. Maybe we are cursed the moment we are born. You fish in the lake? I never did. The waters are dead. Nothing grows or lives in them. Fish are sent to me every once in a while from other regions in Croatia. I have friends, mostly in Istria. Did you know Yakov Prenger? He was our priest and a good friend of mine. I heard he disappeared. On a full moon night, like many others in the past. And that's it? No one knows what happened to him? I'm afraid all we can do is pray for his soul. Excuse me. This drawing reminds me of an ichthys, a secret symbol of early Christians. Oh my god! I've never seen a wood so dark in color as this one. It's almost like coal. Two bodies. Two children. Long dead. Why the priest's robe and nun's habit? It's me again. You keep the corpses of two children in your boat? My father and mother were small people. 
Midget says some would say. What are they doing in there? Laying peacefully in their temporary grave. They were clergy? No. I dressed them as such to protect their bodies. The moon ghouls eat flesh, and they don't care if it's warm or cold. A temporary grave? They were recently exhumed, and I had to take care of them. I don't understand. Who exhumed them? Henry, the priest of Sveti Kota. He banished me from the church, and so my parents had to move out from the town's graveyard. Soil outside the church walls is tainted. The boat was the safest place. Why the massive cross on top? To protect them from the moon ghouls. Faith is the only thing that wards them off. But not for long. Was it torched? The wood is very dark. I made it from the trees that grow behind my house. I would never torch a cross. What sin have you committed to have been banished? Son, we are all original sinners, waiting for redemption. We are, but you did something to deserve it. God knows that is not the truth. Listen, talk to Henry. Reason with him. He must unban me. Why would I do that? Because you need the boat. If Henry accepts, I could move my parents back into their grave and the boat would be free again. It's an opportunity to fulfill Father Imre's wish as well. I'll see what I can do. He's not an easy man to talk to, but maybe he'll be more reasonable with you, monk. Where can I find his church? The church of Ivan Kotar. Go back through the square, find the police station, then follow the alley to your right. Just be sure not to stray into Kuga. Wicked, evil people wander the former school district. They have no soul and have lost all faith. You have no intention of telling me what you did? I don't know. One day, he just said we are not welcome anymore. You have to ask him. Excuse me. Which path should I take? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. man-made in the form of a sacred shape, a black magic circle for rituals. I have no faith in the outcome. I struggle to find a reason to do that. As if the trees are just waiting for me to pass by and close the passage for all eternity.
that path seems to lead nowhere. All I see are rotten tree trunks and naturally formed mounds. A very weird and creepy form they have. It's like looking at a petrified herd of giant spiders. Small, with blood red leaves. I'm going to act on a hunch this time and follow this crawling tree. I was right. Crawling, blood-red leaves. The place where the tree with blood red leaves grows from. This looks like a burial mound. I think I know what happens to Ida's mother. I should talk to Ida. Madam? Hello. You knew Yakov Prenger? Our former priest. I knew who he was, but I never really had a chance to speak to him. Why? I heard he went missing. Many people still go missing, vanishing without trace as if they never existed. I heard this about Yakov too. Sorry I couldn't tell you more, but I really don't know anything else. Do you know anyone who could lend me a boat? There's only one man with a boat in this town, and his name is Arsen. <laughs> Are you completely sure? The lake is huge. There should be more of them. It's arson or nothing. What do you need a boat for? I need it to get to Klek. Beware. Klek is on the list of forbidden places. You think Victoria is there? Could be. Then I wish you luck. Try talking to Arsen. I think he'll help you. Swimming or going on foot would be suicide. I found a mound deep inside the forest. What kind of mound? A burial mound, I believe. How could you... Why are you telling me this? I've seen trees that serve as gallows. They were in the vicinity of the mound. Oh, the purgatory trees. Why purgatory? It's where people go to purify themselves from this place before entering heaven. One of the many beliefs preventing this town from falling into complete madness. A crawling kind of tree with blood-red leaves led me to the mound. Blood-red? The same color and kind of tree you have here. The mound is completely overgrown by the crawling tree. And? It was man-made, erected over what I believe is a grave. I still don't understand. Why are you telling me these things? Have you ever been there? No, not that I recall. I don't know. Why? 
I think you did. And the mound is actually your mother's burial place. What? You said her neck bent awkwardly. To one side, as if it's broken. Her eyes turned blood red, and you heard her scream. Correct. What kind of scream? I don't know. I'd say as if someone was trying to suffocate her. I believe you saw your mother dying on one of the purgatory trees. What? It was probably too painful to cope with the truth, so your mind tricked you into thinking you were not with her when that happened. Can you try to remember? The trees and the corpses and spiders. Were there spiders? Shrubs that look like giant spiders. I saw them too. You must have seen the moment when she hanged herself. That is why you remember the neck bending to one side and how she screamed while suffocating. The blood red leaves. I remember, I, I remember them now. The ground was full of them. There were hundreds, if not thousands of blood red leaves. You were right and the police were wrong. She didn't go into Carcassa alone. You were with her. Can you remember why? Oh, mother. My dear mother, I miss you so much. I let you. I let you do it. I helped you find the place. My mother, she... She couldn't bear the pain anymore. It was so painful watching her wither like a rose in winter. What, what am I going to say to my father now? He knew nothing of her agony. She didn't want him to know. Tell him the truth. He'll understand. Or don't. Sometimes a lie can do more good than the truth itself. Thank you, Benedict. Whenever I go into the forest, I always avoid that place. I always did, even before that fateful day with my mother. If it wasn't for you, uh, I would have never found out what really happened to her. I don't remember burying her. I don't remember taking the trees. Nothing after her death. Maybe revisiting the place could help you out. Think about it. Or just leave it in peace. Maybe I'll go, but not alone. Thank you, my dear monk. No need to thank me. Excuse me. Sure. I'm not going into the police station. I would risk being taken in for questioning, and they could be conspiring with Hatur. Its ropes bear some resemblance to hangman's nooses. Makes sense for a town like this. I have no reason to go that way. It's a narrow, shady street that leads somewhere uphill. I have no reason to go that way. It's a narrow, shady street that leads somewhere uphill. It's a long road that follows the river uphill and into the forest. I'm not going. I don't know where it would take me.
it's locked. Ivan Kotar, born in 1159, died in 1218. Father Henry? Henry Istrator, and you are? Benedict. A fellow man of the cloth, certainly. What gave me away? Your aura. And of course, the tiny crosses on your sleeves. You were saying your name? Benedict Dochnani. Ah, Victoria's brother. We finally meet. What can I do for you, Brother Benedict? You met my sister? Did I meet her? Who knows? Do I know of her? Yes, as every person, crow, and rat in this town. But how do you know we are relatives? I have infinite power, and I am highly respected. When word spreads, it reaches my ears first. I have a theory of what happened here, but I'd like to know more so that I can solidify it. You know much. Maybe you can help me. I'm here for you, brother. What can you tell me about the mayor of Svetikotar? Ranko Merzo, a lurid creature, far worse than his father ever was. Corrupt, full of sin and unscrupulous. Gullible as well. He never saw his death coming, even though he knew he was chased by it. I was called to bless his soul before the funeral. Not going to. The very thought of it sickens me. Who was Ranko's father? Fran Merzel. He and our former priest, Yakov, founded Maraf Asylum. I welcomed the decision, but not anymore. Things changed quickly, and the asylum mutated into the same thing it originally tried to uproot. And what would that be? Marov became an island of terror and death for the Catholic community, instead of being a shield that protects it. It was founded with the goal to heal the unfaithful ones, and more importantly, to identify, catch, and execute the Saborans. Now it's a place where our brothers and sisters go and never return from. Healthy individuals full of faith just vanish. Fran had his share of sins, but he founded Marov with sincere intentions to help the town. Little did he know at the time the evil seeds he had planted. Ranko was chased by death? Nermin, his brother, the worst of the Merzel family, worst of all men, an incarnation of evil. Although coming from a Catholic family, from the day of his birth, it was clear there was something dreadfully wrong with him. I don't know him well, nobody does. But everyone knows about his deeds. Chief Norden said he is a moon ghoul. True, he is a Saboran. Some say even the current leader of their cult. He was once incarcerated in the asylum, but managed to escape. No one can find him anymore. I guess there is not enough will. It's not about the will to find Nermin. He's just a tiny shadow in a starless sky. People in this town dread things they cannot see or feel. The unknowable. They fear it because it is everywhere God is not. You're talking about the moon ghouls now, right? That is just a name for the weak. Call them by their true name, the Saborans. The Saborans are not unknowable. They are an ancient tribe that glorifies death, diseases, and pain. Cannibals who cultivate morbid rituals as part of their religion, Sekvra. Sekvra? I've heard that name before. 
somewhere. You heard it because there was a book of the same name, the original copy of which was lost in the 15th century. Yes, it all happened during the Valet Witch Trials. Dark times fell upon that place because of the book. It vanished with its author, a witch by the name of Yadviga Mazrak. You can see the Saborans are not a complete mystery. Things we cannot possibly understand are, my brother, the forces and entities this tribe worships. Only madness and death await those who manage to understand. It is what happened to Ivan Kotar, after all. Let's leave this subject. I cannot possibly recount centuries of their history in the reasonable time I have now. Maybe one day you'll be able to read the pamphlet I've written on them. Maybe. Tell me about the Asylum's Warden. Hatur. As the head of the Asylum, I know he is somehow involved in the conspiracy against the Catholics. I'm the only person in this town who openly criticizes him, the chief, and the mayor. In one way or another, they are all acting against God, and possibly fallen under the influence of the Saborids. What interests you about him? My sister's husband went missing after visiting him at the lodge. Nikolai. He was kidnapped. But I feel there is more you want to say. Victoria met with Hatur last night. They talked, and I still can't understand what happened to her. So I was right. This sheds new light on the warden and the tribe. Not so much on her. You think my sister joined the tribe? I do, although I don't know how. Have you seen any changes in her lately? That is a question for her husband. After our father disappeared, I went into monkhood. Since then, I barely see her. When things start to look bad, some people think it's God's fault. Instead of showing him more love, they turn away from him. They don't realize it is only then when they decide to forget him, that they start to wither their own souls. Sometimes they don't just wither, but rot. Rot until it is too late to get off the path that leads to hell. The Warden is meeting with the Saborans. A boy told me. What boy? Anton. He saw them meeting more than once. Our protege? I knew he had been sneaking out, just couldn't prove it. He saw Hatur taking Nikolai away to a locality called Klek. I've never visited that hill, but everyone knows what that place is. The boy could be right. Victoria abandoned God. I can feel it in my heart. She did it. The same happens to our aunt. She abandoned God turned her faith to strange beliefs and experienced a dreadful death. It doesn't matter what you feel and what I believe. You have to find the whole truth. It is your responsibility. Find your sister and the truth that is hiding with her. I would risk going to the stake if I had to choose whether she is guilty or not. This town has many possible sources of evil. Where should I look for her? Begin with Click. You might find her there with your brother-in-law, hopefully still alive. What other sources of evil? Everyone, including those who impose the so-called law. Everyone could be evil, even those who claim to be faithful. Keep your eyes open. How come there's nothing in the Vatican's official archives about Sveti Kotar? Because of Ivan Kotar. This town has an open dispute with the Vatican because of him. First, they sent emissaries to execute him. Then they denied the authorities to name this town in his honor. We did what was right, named him a patron saint. 
the Vatican is run by a mass of hypocrites. It's the Holy See we are talking about here. There's nothing closer to God. Nothing closer to God? Just because they said so centuries again? How can they ignore what Kotar did here? Maybe they are now aware of their own mistakes from the past, but have done absolutely nothing to mend them. You cannot question their decisions. It's like questioning the Bible. Brother, let's agree we don't agree and leave it there. We have other things to worry about right now. I've never heard of a priest talking about the church in this way. Unacceptable. But this, along with other things I've learned until now, might be enough information for Father Imre. What about your dispute with Arsen? Where did you meet that fool? He's my only chance to get across the lake, and... You need his boat to get to Klek. So why didn't he give it to you? He doesn't need it. He's dying due to that vampire of his. His parents are inside the boat. Did you exhume them? Of course I didn't. I ordered the gravekeeper to do it. Arsen and his family are not welcome here anymore. The man is not evil, merely a fool who let evil do upon him. His parents are inside the boat. Of course the man is... What vampire? Didn't you talk to him? I did. And you didn't notice that hideous dark thing on his neck? No. That fool got himself a parasitic giant worm. A leech he named Hem. That's disgusting. But what is the reason you banned him? I'm telling you, it's Hem. That thing was born and found deep inside the Carcassa forest. It's evil. Can't he just get rid of it? Arson believes Hem was sent to him from God. Can you believe it? He gave it a name and looks to it as his own child. So what now? Anywhere else I could get a boat? He is your only chance. And it seems like you are his only chance as well, if it's not too late. What do you mean? If he accepts to kill Hem, I promise I will think about reintegrating him and his family into our church again. But I need proof. I need to see Hem dead. How do you expect him to kill the thing he sees as his own child? That is the tricky part. I already tried to persuade him. Now it's your turn. If you succeed, you will get what you want. You will just think about reintegrating him, or you will do it? I'll do it. Immediately after I give you a dead hem. I promise. It's me again. I talked to Henry about the dispute. And? Is he going to remove the ban? What is the reason he banned you in the first place? I don't know. Could you please step outside so I can see you better? No. It's safer in here. May I come in then? You are not family. Step outside, please. We talked before, and you didn't ask me that. Why is it so important now? Henry gave me something for you. I want to see you under the light while giving it to you. Henry is willing to unban you. Is he? Really? Yes. 
I will tell you all about our conversation, but you have to come outside. I don't see the point, but if it's going to save my family... Now, what do you have to show me? God, that leech thing on his neck is hideous. That is Hem. I never imagined a leech could get so big. Henry was right. The vampire thing is sucking the life out of this poor, naive man. I have to persuade him to give it to me. Arson, we have to talk about your child. You stay away from him. Is this why you wanted me out here? Stay away. Calm down. I'm not going to do anything to him. I promise. What do you want then? Where did you find him? I didn't find him. He found me. Years ago, I helped a young detective with a case he was working on. He then showed gratitude by giving me a bucket full of leeches. And there he was. My little Hem. I'm so proud of him. He has grown much since that day. God bless that detective. It was Detective Mostov? I believe that was his name. Martin. Why? Just curious. How did you help him? We went on a tour of the lake. I showed him some places, but he was mostly interested in the island of the asylum. Did he say why he was interested in the island? Something about a runaway. I don't know. Henry told me Hem was born in the Carcassa forest. That doesn't mean he is evil. Henry thinks anything that grows or lives in that forest must be tainted. And so out of all the leeches you had, you picked the exact one that became Hem. He picked me. He crawled his way out of the bucket, moved on to my left hand, and then all the way up to my neck. His favorite spot, where he sleeps and eats. How's your health? Are you a doctor now? I've noticed you have trouble breathing, and your skin has no color. Have you had this problem for a long time? I don't know what you are talking about. I feel fine. Didn't you say before you are too weak to board the boat? The love of my child gives me strength and positivity. But I would feel better if I was allowed to attend masses again. And if my house would be blessed as it was before the ban. I have an idea how we can solve your dispute with Henry. I'm listening. You have to give me Hem. What? Forget it! Stay away! Remember, I'm in the service of God. You have my word, I won't hurt your child. He will die without my blood! No, he won't, and you know that. How long do you think he can live without you? And be honest with me, it's your family at stake here. Maybe just for one night. This is the only way to get you absolved, but I need guidance from you. What guidance? And you have to keep our little secret to yourself. I don't like this. The plan is to find a leech similar to your hem. For that to work, I'd need your guidance. Where can I find one? Why do you need hem then? So I can compare him to his potential clone. Henry seems like a clever man, and surely he remembers hem's appearance very well. My dear child in the hands of a stranger. I can't do this. Do you want to live? If I die, Hem dies. I cannot let that happen. As soon as I find his double, I will return Hem safely to you. And then what? I will bring the double to Henry, claiming it's Hem. All you will have to do from then on is hide Hem when you are near Henry. You intend to lie to a man of God? It's for a greater good. God will understand. Your proposal seems like the only way out of this situation. My dear child, please forgive me. 
Do not fret. We'll meet again soon. Go now, in the hands of this monk. Farewell. I'll wait for you here. The house is lonely without you. Don't be sad. You did what had to be done. God bless him. Where can I find his double? I've never been inside the forest. But Ida told me once she found a place full of leeches. I believe it's where the detective found him. You must go through the wall of crosses and turn left at the crossroads. His brothers and sisters should be there. Where Holly meets Hanna. Hanna is the river? It is. Keep him safe and get him back as soon as possible. I will. Let me say it again. Beware of the forest. It's easy to get lost in that malignant place. What should I do now? Should I kill him or find his double and kill it instead? Whatever I decide, God will understand. Dark times require immoral acts. Excuse me. I think this is the place Arsen told me about. It's swarming with leeches. How am I going to find one similar enough to him? Uh, they all look the same. Right, right. By concentrating only on the biggest ones. It's not going to work. Looks similar enough, but maybe I should look at others before choosing. I don't know. Something is off with this one. Hideous. It's laying eggs right now. Its flesh seems to be infected. Pass. No, too thin.
I don't know. Something is off with this one. Its flesh seems to be infected. Pass. The size fits. This is the one. No need to search further. Excuse me. Which path should I take? A man that goes by the name Yakov Prenger, was he a former priest of this church? He preceded me. Why? I heard he went missing. True. He was the warden of the asylum before Ranko became mayor. Then, one night, he just disappeared. Any ideas what happened to him? He was kidnapped by the Saborans and became their prey the usual for this town. The new warden got him imprisoned because he knew too much? Or maybe that poor blind lady killed him because he couldn't love her the way she loved him. It's a mystery. Was he a good warden? Better than Hatur? Yes. Good? No. He was too soft and hesitant. We could have done so much more regarding the war against the Saborans. Seems to me you're holding a grudge against him. Am I wrong? We never liked each other. He was sent by the Vatican to take my place here. The Vatican, which for centuries never tried to contact anyone in this town, sends a man to take my seat. I could do nothing but step down. Yes, I hated him as much as I hate the Vatican. 
and I'm grateful to whoever made him disappear. Excuse me. Of course. He doesn't want this thing alive, only dead. He doesn't want this thing alive, only dead. Where's this idea coming from? Is such a thing even possible? Ivan Kotar, born in 1159, died in 1218. This feels wrong. The street is a dead end that leads to the cemetery. I'm not comfortable going in a place like that without a good reason. I can see the school from here. I'm not going in. It's the district Arsen told me to stay away from. That's a strange notion. Excuse me. What do you want? Remember me? Should I? From last night? My sister and brother-in-law were with me. I'm not a visual man. I don't remember faces. They dissolve into fog pretty fast. So you don't remember my sister, Victoria? The two of you talked last night. Victoria, you say? I remember her glasses and name. Did you see her today? No. You've lost her? She lost herself, and we cannot find her. Keep looking and seek help from God. <laughs> or ask someone who thinks to be one. And who would be that fool? Fool? <laughs> Funny you say that, because that's how I call him, too. My cousin, Norin. <laughs> the 
The chief of police is your cousin? Dominic Norrin, the feared and respected law of the valley of Sveti Kotar. <laughs> I've had a chance to talk with him already. He doesn't seem to know where Victoria is. That means nothing. He's either lying or you're a fool as much as he is. Was there anyone else when he talked to you? Yes. He likes that. He likes to be on the stage in front of a crowd. If I decide to talk to him, where should I go? You'll find him in his office at the police station. It's where he eats, sleeps, and fulfills his needs. Talk to him alone. He's more vulnerable without a crowd. Walk into the police station. His office is the door on the left. Just knock and tell him Davor Gorski has sent you. All right. He won't care, so you'll have to give him a good reason to let you in. Luckily, that reason is in front of your eyes. You? I don't understand. A gift. The cleaver, right in front of you. A cleaver will make him change his mind? Is this a joke? No joke. It'll wait for you here for whenever, if ever, you decide to talk to the fool. Sveti Kotar is a small town. Where do strangers go when they visit? Any particular place I should know of? Ah, glad you're asking. I got many recommendations. You should definitely venture into the Carcassa Forest. Its trees are magical this time of year. Then, don't miss out on the greatest view of the valley. Climb to the top of the Udav Mountain and enjoy the breathtaking sight. Lastly, take a diving course at the Lake Hali. I mean, forget about people. Don't ask anyone. Just dive. Just do it yourself and enjoy the rich underwater life. Your soul will be grateful. Grateful beyond imagination if you dip your toes into the spring of the Henna River. I feel like you're mocking me. I am. <laughs> What was that huge, horrible thing that was set on fire last night? Tradition. This town has a history of blaming everyone except God. God is never to be blamed. He has his own ways of- Blah, blah, blah. I heard it a thousand times before. People around here blame strangers, good spirits, demons, witches, and even the Vatican. Everyone else except the one they idolize. The Vatican? Crazy thing for a Catholic town, isn't it? But why? And why do you say they should blame God? Look around you. Talk to people. Stay long enough and you'll understand. <laughs> Tell me about the moon ghouls. They will eat your soul and feast over your flesh. You know who they are? A cannibal tribe that follow the moon demons. The moon is the key. In what way? I already said too much. Seek more knowledge elsewhere. Where could I get a boat? Are you kidding me? Why? Just walk along the shoreline and pick one up. The town is letting people use them for free to encourage fishing. You can't be serious. The lake is dead. <laughs> I love it. About the boat, what can I do? The only fool to have one is that old fisherman. Dead fisherman? I haven't seen him for a while. Excuse me. I'm not a thief. Madam? Hello. Excuse me. Sure.
crow attacked me outside and broke the lamp. I left it in the woods. Oh, yes. That is why I never used it. The only time I did, I was attacked too. And you couldn't have warned me? I forgot, I'm sorry. But don't beat yourself up. I don't need the lamp anyway. She said she wanted it back. Never mind. I have no faith in the outcome. It's locked. Only silence and darkness from inside. Those shrubs look poisonous. I'm staying away from it. Which path should I take? I don't want to look at those corpses anymore. I have to talk to Henry first. Found one similar to my child? Not yet.
There's a time and place to talk to him. This is not one of them. I have nothing to do in there. I'm sinless. I dare not to try this. He doesn't want this thing alive, only dead. This door is off limits for you. There's a time and place to talk to him. This is not one of them. I'm not going into the police station. I would risk being taken in for questioning, and they could be conspiring with Hatur. Ivan Kotar, Sanctus Patronus. Only dust remains of the thing that was set on fire last night. Who is it? I'd like to ask you some questions. About what? Different things. Uh, maybe you could help me? Uh, a stranger. Could you come out of the room? No, and I don't want to talk to you. Take a look at my inventory, read some books, do whatever you want. I don't care about those knockoffs. And take a sample of the tongue's map from the desk. That way you can't say I didn't help you. But I... Stop talking. I want silence. I don't need it. I already have one. White and red squares. A Croatian version of the chessboard. I'm no expert, but I'm pretty confident this is a 15th century map of Europe. Everything in this town revolves around that troubling period of human history.
Am I really going to take it? Good. Very good, priest. Now go. Walk bravely into the Temple of Law. You're bringing a gift. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I should probably try something else. Rot in hell. The thing has been executed. I should give it to Henry now. Chem is dead. Proof? Stabbed to death. It is the vampire indeed. How did you manage to persuade that old fool? Does it really matter now? It's done. The thing is rotting in hell. Are you going to keep your word? Of course. You can go tell Arson. I will come to visit him soon. His house needs to be blessed. I will. God bless you. Take the boat. Row towards the truth, brother. I'll keep you in my prayers and hope we'll meet again soon. Chem is gone. What do you mean? He's dead. What? How? What happened? I killed him. I had to do it. You don't understand. No, no, no! My M, My little child! No! You don't understand. Chem was an evil thing. A vampire. He was draining your life force. How could you? You... You are a monster! You made me believe you! You killed my child! Oh... Him? My dearest one? I can't... My life has no meaning anymore. My life is ended. You didn't kill only him. You killed both of us. You are no longer banned from the church. Henry said he'll come by soon to bless your house. I don't care. My faith is not important anymore. God has abandoned me. Be gone now. The boat is free. I moved my parents into my house. Follow the shore along the other side until you see the three white fingers. I hope you experience an agonizing death on Plek. Amen. I'm throwing this leech into the lake. I don't need it anymore. 
the boat is here, but they left. It might be too late, but I have to try. I have to get on top of that hill. God help me. Now more than ever. <sighs> Click. Crows! They are everywhere! At least a dozen circling above these finger-like rocks. I should try to find some clues where Hatur might have taken Nikolai as quickly as possible. This rock looks like an altar. Blood. Lots of blood here. Drag marks in the blood. Splatter to the right of the rock. Now smaller drops. Very hard to spot. They lead towards those small rocks. I'm struggling to notice anything here, but those look like bloody fingerprints. Footprints and marks of a body being dragged into the woods. Was Nikolai sacrificed here? I have no choice. I must follow the clues. Blood has led me here, to a water mill deep inside the woods. And I was followed the whole time. Human skin! I still can't fathom the hate and cruelty shared among God's creations. The force of the small river outside is apparently strong enough to propel this mechanism. And it seems like the mechanism is moving something underground. More blood. Wherever I go in this place, all I see is blood and death. If I didn't come here, thoughts like this would never cross my mind. I can't open it. The doorknob is missing. I have no faith in the outcome. I struggle to find a reason to do that. sound coming from down there. A small window was hidden behind this bush. That's Nikolai. He's either unconscious or dead. That massive pendulum is about to slice him in two. Nikolai! Wake up, Nikolai! Nothing. He's not moving.
This mechanism is making the pendulum swing. There's no other explanation. I should try to stop the wheels, but I'd need something long and strong enough to do that. This mechanism is making the pendulum swing. There's no other explanation. I should try to stop the wheels, but I'd need something long. Human skin. I still can't fathom the hate and cruelty shared among God's creations. I think I'm going to throw up, but this stake could be what I need for the mechanism of the wheel. This is a nightmare. It is massive, but I think I'll manage to carry it for this short distance. They all look the same. A tripod structure with two triangles on top, made of twigs and tied up with a yellow plant root. It's the symbol from the house. I'm not sure if they are meant to keep the worshippers safe, or harm the sacrifice by deepening their pain. You're alive! Benedict? Come downstairs. Quickly! Uh, come here. I'm... I'm too weak to... Uh. How did you find me? I thought you already left town. You can thank God for that. There's no time. We must get out of here. I don't know where Hatur is, but I fear he... No, not anymore. Please. I'm everywhere. I see and hear everything. Your body is yellow because of the robe, but you have a face. My face is a mask. Someone told me moon ghouls have yellow bodies and shadows instead of faces. So what are you? I am the king. You, that worm at your feet, the child on the pier. You all are slaves to Kasag. What do you want? Where is Nermin? I don't know that man. More importantly, where is the book? What book? Get down. Crawl like a worm. Start pr- 
praying to that god of yours. <laughs> Please. We only want Victoria. You wouldn't be here if that was the case. Facing the final moments of your existence. Tell me where Nerman is, and your agony will be brief. Give me the book, and your soul will be left to wander free. Don't do it, and you will be tortured until the last drop of blood has left your body. You will be then sent to Ahrizath to serve Kasag. I know you talked to Victoria last night. She was asked the same questions, and she refused to talk. Just like the two of you. Things would have been different for everyone if she did her part. What part? We came in this town to find... It hurts, I know. You should blame her. Didn't you hear the chief of police? Victoria and Nermin have disappeared. Norin is insignificant. A blind follower of that god of yours. You know exactly where they are hiding. I don't know what book you're talking about. Uh, Nikolai, do you? The Sekfra. I already told him. I don't know anything about it. The long-lost occult book. The original was destroyed by the Inquisition. It was, until a new one was written, enriched with secrets beyond your earthly realm, and more powerful than your silly little Bible. You know where it is, and you know what will happen if you don't give it to me. I'm giving you the last chance to speak up. And don't try to escape. Give up the book, or tell me where it is. I should do something, but what? God, help me! I have your book. You will regret it! Help me tie him up. Let's get out of here. There's another lever at the top of the stairs. Remember, there can be only one god. I should contemplate more about this decision. I can't see a thing. It looks bottomless. You sure about this? Uh, if I have to choose between two nightmares, I'll, I'll, I'll take the one in my head. You should get some rest too. I'm going to lay on the couch downstairs. Not really. As soon as he falls asleep, I'm getting out of here. When I close my eyes, I can still see the pendulum getting closer with each breath. What happened in the lodge? It was that detective. He deceived us. He pushed us into this trap. Thank God we split. We would have been both dead by now if we hadn't. How did Hatur manage to take you away? I don't know. He just appeared in front of my eyes. And then everything went dark. From then on, my mind kept 
phasing in and out, so... I don't, I don't remember much. Until I was awakened by these appalling screams. He was skinning a man. Alive. Impaled on a stake. Who was that skinned man? During one of the conscious phases, I remember seeing him in the boat. He had no skin on his face and no eyes. It was impossible to know his identity. He was a living corpse. What happened in the water mill? I don't want to talk about it. You are drained of energy. Your face is ghastly pale and you barely talk. But you don't seem physically injured. So what happened? I'm not certain we killed him, Benedict. Can death die? You heard his screams at the end. That man is no longer part of this reality. I think he, he cursed me. He said so many words in an ancient language, and then with every word that came out, there was a, a weight inside. It was becoming heavier, unpleasant, until unbearable. He was trying to curse my soul, Benedict. He wanted me to let it go. You are here. You survived. Calm down now. No need to talk about it anymore. There should be no more doubt, even for you. Victoria is involved in the horrors of this place. She's not. You heard her tour. He said that she was asked the same questions about Nerman in a book, which means she was captured and tortured too. That man was lying and he never said she was tortured, just that he asked her the same questions. Why did she rent the house for three nights? We were supposed to leave together immediately the next day. I don't know. She just said to me we were going to stay more. I thought she was just joking. You know her. No, I don't know her. Not anymore. It was Lucia, the owner of this cozy house, who told me it was rented for that long. Why would she stay this long and without telling us, if not for obscure intentions? She's not guilty, Benedict. For God's sake, it's your sister we're talking about. Did you know that Victoria and Khatur had a friendly conversation in the woods last night? Who told you that? Madame Vera, the neighbor. In the woods? I went in there and found fresh footprints near a mass of human remains. Can you explain that? It could have been someone else, or... or that neighbor is lying. Remember what Mostov said before letting us go? Khatur was looking for Victoria last night, before the incident at the castle. I don't believe anyone. She had nothing to do with those atrocities. To sum up, and please don't interrupt me. Victoria and Nerman disfigured the mayor to worship a malignant deity. I'm getting sick just by saying this, but the mayor was Nerman's father, so you can imagine what kind of monster he is. She dragged me into this town, claiming that we would be staying just one night, but she actually rented the house for three nights. Did she plan to sacrifice me to her new master? Maybe even the both of us. Khatur knew her, a man who called himself the king of a cannibal tribe. Maybe she has that book he was looking for. Maybe she just didn't want to tell him where Nermin is. All I know... A man that evil would have killed her in the woods if they didn't have a mutual agenda. Victoria left God and became what our parents feared she could be. She murdered that man in the Carcassa forest, and she murdered her unborn child. She did not. Our child is not dead. I already saw that in our family. Victoria became what our parents feared she could become. Our aunt. She never told me anything bad about your aunt. She murdered her unborn child, too. Murdered? <sighs> That's impossible. Victoria would never have kept such a secret from me. Nikolai, she kept her mouth shut because she's afraid of becoming just like our aunt. Enough. Leave. You can say whatever you want. I know my wife is just a victim in this story. She's a good person. You should rest now. But first, let me just ask you what- Why did you choose to stay? You don't care about your sister. Even less about me. To find the truth. It's my responsibility to know what happened and to understand why she did it. Victoria became what our father hated. I want to know why. Well, 
It couldn't be simpler. The truth is right in front of you. You're just too blind to see it. What was that you wanted to ask me? In the watermill. You said to Hatur you came into this town to find something. What exactly? Hatur said Kasag knows what you did. What did he mean by that? Don't answer. I just wanted to see your face while asking. I'll find the truth eventually. I should pay a visit to Mostov. He has a lot to explain and surely knows more about what's going on. It's a risk going there after what happened to Hatur. And there's still the chance they can take me in. But I think I'm out of options. Officer. Officer Mars. Stranger, do me a favor. Take a look at those two opened case files on the desk. Why? Just do it. Yonkadia. Disappeared on March 2nd, 1982. Person last seen on a full moon night. Multiple witnesses saw him talking to a strange tall man earlier that day. Clothes and personal belongings found in a trash bin near the railway station. Clothes were full of crow feathers and blood-stained. Analysis showed blood was of unknown animal origin. Haven Elizabeth McGuire. Date of disappearance is unknown. Talked to a few officers on a few occasions, asking for directions. Was particularly interested in the mountain. Rented two rooms for two nights in the Lodge Goldin. Reasons unknown. According to the receptionist, she didn't eat nor sleep. Receptionist heard her talking to someone in the room the first night but saw no one with her before or after. Adi Boyanich, such a beautiful dog. I looked at the case files. What was the point? Remember those people. They were strangers just like you. They wander around the town just like you. You don't get to walk safely in this valley. Sveti Kotar is a dangerous place. I know that. They knew too, and the ones that went missing before and after them. Everyone knows, but nobody cares. I understand. Thank you for being so thoughtful, officer. Just doing my job. Now tell me, what made you appear in front of my desk tonight? I'm looking for Detective Mostov. He's downstairs with the mayor. Wait a minute. Who are you, anyway? I... Uh, this man doesn't seem to know about me in the interrogation. I'd better lie. Well? I was sent to bless the mayor's corpse before the funeral. Who sent you? Father Henry. Why? Is he all right? He always comes. Well, no. He didn't feel well tonight, and it was an important matter that couldn't wait. So, here I am. I agree, but you are a stranger. You don't live in Sveti Kotar. I'm a visiting priest of the church of Ivan Kotar. I see. 
All right, father. You may go see the mayor downstairs. It's the passage behind me. When did the disappearances start? Centuries ago. And no one did anything to stop it by now? Hey, we are doing the best we can, even though it helps nothing. If the efforts of the Inquisition were futile, then there's not much we can really do here. Just pray, I guess. What did the Inquisition do? They built this building, the Grimalda Castle, and the Church of Mary in the forest. Helped to materialize God, you know. They banned the Saboran name and religion, and they hunted them. Thanks to their efforts, many followers of the vile tribe were captured and executed. But the evil is still here. It's floating in the air, it's crawling under the ground, and it's poisoning the mines. Why not just abandon this valley, then? It's irreversibly cursed. Faith. We the Katarians are stubborn people. We may have little possessions, but we never lack faith. And one day, a savior will come, and we will be free of the malice. It's faith that keeps us living and hoping. Excuse me. So many case files. It's sad when your life, your whole existence since the day you were born is reduced to a sheet of paper. Ivan Kotar. His eyes are in every nook and cranny of this town. Beati qui ambulant in lege domini. Amen to that. Chief Norin? He won't answer you. Your cousin Davorgorsky has sent me. Leave. Told you so. I have a gift for you. You want me to arrest you this time? It's a cleaver. Davor said that you... You may go in now. That was the sign. Put that thing on my chair. The chair in front of the fireplace. What thing? The damn cleaver! If you need to talk to me, I'm here. You may go now. I should be careful what I say. The cleaver I brought you. Stop! I just want to know the story behind it. I won't tell you, and neither will Davor. It seems a bit strange that a thing like that gave me access to your office. I have your fingerprints on it now. So? I did nothing. I just brought it to you. Oh, but you did more than that. You got involved in something your feeble mind cannot possibly comprehend. And what would that be? Keep asking, and you'll realize soon. Better just stop. Excuse me. God bless you, Benedict. Finally, Father. We were waiting on your arrival. God forgive me, but I started with the prayers in your absence. I hope I didn't cause any harm to this man's poor soul. You think God will forgive you for what you did to us? Benedict? I... I thought I heard Henry upstairs. It's what you thought you heard because we are already dead in your mind. That is absolutely not true. Then why do you look so confused and uncomfortable to see me? It's not. I, I, I'm just... I'm horrified by what was done to our mayor. Take a look at him if you wish, or we can continue talking. I must warn you though, what's hiding underneath that sheet could haunt you forever. And I must warn you too. 
Henry knows I'm here, so do not try anything foolish. Type A, Type 0. These bottles are all full of blood. I'm no expert, but I never knew blood to be taken out of corpses. Why would they do that? It must be the yellow mask the mayor was wearing when they found him in the forest. Yellow masks are nothing but disembodied skin faces of past Saboran's victims. Colored with sulfur and then smeared with some strange kind of wax to prevent decay. The skull was open to take a piece of the brain out. The eyes were gouged out and the skin ripped off of his face. Dreadful. Belittling. The worshipper took his face to create a new yellow mask, while the eyes and part of the brain were eaten as a part of the ritual. The skull was opened to dreadful. The worshipper took his face to create... Slit open and disemboweled. This is what bewilders us. The heart was taken out and eaten as usual, but they never disemboweled the trunk. Strange. Answer me. Do you worship the evil and the unknown just like the man you follow? The man I follow? Hatur is a Saboran. What? what? Nikolai believed you. I didn't. But still, we both fell into Hatur's trap and were almost murdered. I... I... God, no. Are you sure? How can you be so sure? You must be lying. Do you think I am capable of lies? A man of God never lies. You... You are right. I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry. I swear to God, I didn't know who he really is. I... I... I was just following orders. But I'll do whatever it takes to be forgiven. Whatever it takes, whatever God demands. Then start showing some good faith by answering my questions. What happened last night? What do you mean? You were with Hatur, and he was looking for Victoria. Why? I... I don't know. I can't remember. Where's Hatur now? Don't lie to me. You know the reason. I wasn't told anything. You're afraid of him. Hatur is no longer with us. You killed him? God has his ways of dealing with evil. All right, all right. I was just told we should find Victoria before she carries out whatever plans she had with Nermin. Plan she had? How do you know she had a plan? We know she met with Nermin and the cult the first time she came here. What are you talking about? This is our first time in this place. You didn't know? <laughs> that explains a lot. She visited a town a few months ago. No doubt about it, multiple witnesses saw her. Who are the witnesses? I know only of Lucia, the owner of the house where we found you earlier. This means... Did Victoria stay in the same house back then? She did. Introduce herself as uh, Petra. Why do you think she met with Nermin in the cult back then? You don't have to be smart to connect the pieces. She arrived just after Nermin's escape from the asylum. The case you've been working on. How do you know? I had a chat with the old man at the lake. Arsen. Good man. I regret taking his help for it made me lose half of my brain. Right. So is it possible Victoria helped Nermin escape? Or did she arrive here when she found out about it? It's all connected. It must be. We're still trying to find out how. I said it before, and I'll repeat it now. It's crazy to think that your sister did all this, but if evidence leads us there, I'm sorry. The asylum is under the control of the subordinates, isn't it? I don't know. So why would they imprison Nermin? It doesn't make any sense. He's one of them. 
That's just a rumor Henry is trying to spread to the townspeople. No one, except for the warden and the staff, knows what's going on in the asylum. No one, not even our chief. The more I learn about the truth, the less I can understand what happened. Did you identify the man with the yellow mask? The castle incident? Yes, the identity of the man that was pushed by Victoria. We found all his, or should I say most of his, body parts. Wasn't easy. He splashed and ricocheted all over the castle. Needless to say, due to severe disfiguration, we still haven't found out who he was. Getting his identity will be tough, if not impossible. You didn't find his hands? We did. Didn't you run the database against his fingerprints then? Do you know where you are? It's like we're stuck in medieval times. We don't have a database of any sort. For God's sake. He was wearing a yellow mask. You found his head. Don't you have his teeth? Only what's left of them. And they can't help in any way. I know what you're asking. I'm aware of identification through dental records. But we have no dentists in town. Even the teeth are rotting here. How can I get to the castle? It's very easy. Going out of the station, you turn right, and then just follow the river uphill. But forget about it. Grimalda is off limits every day of the year except on October 28th, which was yesterday. Maybe there could be some clues to who that man was. Something, anything. That's our job, not yours. And I would never let you go there, Father. It's sealed and locked for a reason. A sealed door won't stop me if the truth moves me in that direction. You lost part of your brain by helping Arsen. Could you tell me what happened? I... uncovered something which I wasn't supposed to. Someone learned about my discovery and tried to kill me. I still can't remember what I found and who attacked me. Heck, sometimes I can't even remember what I did yesterday. But God help me, I'll find the truth. Yes, I will. Excuse me. Father, could you do me a favor? It depends on the request. Please go upstairs and ask Officer Maz to give you the case file I handed to him earlier. I want to make things right. You want to make things right? What do you mean? Just... trust me. Go get it. I don't want to leave the mayor now. I have to pray for his poor soul. I'll do it. Thank you, Father. Detective Mostov sent me to get a case file for him. He said nothing to me. The one I handed you before. Give him just the note from inside. No problem, father. He's gone. No, it's probably the room where they keep the corpses. This note wasn't here before. I had to go, Father. I apologize. What Maz gave you is the last page of Victoria's notebook. We found it in the belfry at the crime scene. Other notes are irrelevant, dated months ago. No one will notice a page missing. This is the only evidence I can give you. Hope it helps for you to find her, and for me to be forgiven of my sins. P.S. If you need me later, come visit me. Once you get out of the station, turn right, and then just follow the narrow street until you reach the last house on the hill. P.P.S. Burn this note. This is his way of making things right? I'll take the note as evidence, and it could help me to find his house later.
You won't take me in? Why would we? You're more valuable to us on the outside. Most of light. Letting us go was all planned. You seem shocked. Trust me. You wouldn't be wandering around the town if I didn't allow it. You think I... that we are going to lead you to Victorian and Nedmin? Yes. Or they're going to come after you. But you are wrong. I'm never wrong, and I never fail. About the man in the yellow mask. The one your sister pushed to his death? About him, yes. Have you found his identity yet? No. And even if we did, I would never tell you. Stop asking. How good of a detective is Mostov? The best. Really? He doesn't seem to be... focused all the time. Not sure if he's all that reliable either. He's obedient and disciplined. That's all I need from my men. Excuse me. God bless you, Benedict. I know nothing about flowers, but this one has a unique shade of blue. It's pretty, if not a bit strange to see in a man's office. I see books of all kinds, but the religious type dominates the shelves. Zirkva, Redemptio, Ispoviedi, Rimska Katecheza, to name just a few I see on first glance. It's an old shabby chair. The cleaver is placed on it as a trophy of some kind. The Bible. It leads to the interrogation rooms. I have no intention of going down there. This should be the street that leads to Mostov's house. The glass is dirty and darkened, making it impossible to see through. Just a well. I can't see how deep it is since its hatch is closed. I can't see a thing. The glass is too dirty. Most of it's me, Benedek. Hello. Mostov? Your door was unlocked. Well, who do we have here? What are you doing here? Hiding behind the door in Mostov's house. Sometimes they just come to you. No hunting, no drama. Perfect. What? You'll make a perfect gift for Kasak. You will. Wait, no! Ah, 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 ah!
Thank you. 